Welcome to the motherfucking show. Kids. Now, what day is it? Uh, I have no idea. Sun- what day is it? Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, yeah, Sunday. We always do Sunday. We need football on to tell us what day it is. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> fucking for real, dude. Favorite time of the year is when football is happening. Uh, f- episode 41, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's 41 in Spanish, Paul, real quick? Uh, 41. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Uh, our guest today, Jeff Moran, my What's guy. Up, guys? Hey, dude! Thanks for coming out. Yeah, thanks oh, for having me. Yeah, the golf applause yeah, always has to come applause. in. <laughs> Throwing Jeff through a loop right now. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So we're just like <laughs> head on the swivel, head on the swivel. <laughs> Dude, uh, well, thanks for coming. I know you're yeah. from Idaho, and this has been yes. a long travel, right? Did you fly or drive in? I no, I flew in. You flew in. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, I I actually used to live down here. Long time ago. Tell me about that. Oh man, that was years ago. I actually I was living in uh, the Bay Area for a little bit, and then I came down here to work. So years ago, back before my, well, what I do now, but I was a door to door salesman. Ooh, so, gosh, no, yeah, way. I was like the scum of the earth. Yeah, you know, that's like, the grind, right? dude. Jeez, it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, what right. are you selling? That's an even better question. Back Alarms in. and surveillance. Oh Jesus, that's good, right? So that was back before like the whole solar thing kicked off, and everybody was all. Come here and you can give away free solar. I don't even know yeah. what the pitch is, but yeah. So wow. I actually did that for like 15 years. 15 wow. years. Yeah. All over, I've lived Damn. everywhere across the country. I've lived in like 20 states. I've lived in Canada. I've lived in pretty much every metro you can think of. Dude, you, well, I would say like judging not from your Instagram, like you're definitely living that like nomad lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's not a knock on you by any means. Like I, I do appreciate people who do that for sure. I think the last year and I don't know, I've been back in Idaho for like last year and a half, but I was in Louisville, Kentucky before that. And then Nashville. And what's that? What's the Louisville like? I, I don't know what it's like now after the whole COVID and riot thing. I don't even want to. So it's so tough <laughs> now because <laughs> like, you're like, Oh, I love going to, you know, where X, Y, Z, but in the, within this last year, you're like, fuck, well, I don't know how it is now. You know, I, I well, I mean, I haven't been gone for too long. I used to love Louisville. I actually still do love Louisville. Downtown's kind of a lot of fun. Um, the Churchill Downs, the horse racing stuff. Mm-hmm. Although Churchill's kind of ghetto, to be honest. Really? It's in the hood, too. It's not even... The Preakness is worse over there in Baltimore. Oh, I've heard terrible things about Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Terrible I've things. I've lived there, too, so that one. <laughs> of course. But uh, I might have to, like, figure out some of the hat and the, the whole... Mic set up. But we'll what, what, it you, what are you struggling? No, it just keeps falling off. But oh. yeah. I mean, you don't uh, have to have the years. No, no, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. No, Louisville. I don't know. Downtown's a lot of fun, but it's one of those places. Actually, it seems like every city's like that, where you drift like one street too far. And oh you're yeah. Like oh no, Chicago. Oh yeah. I used to live there too. <laughs> Dude, Chicago. So my dad used to work strictly work in Chicago. Really. And I would go. I'm talking like for 30 years, and he still does a little work there, but. For a long, long time and really like for a, a huge gap of my adolescence was in Chicago. And I'll never forget, like walking down there like 11 years old and some black dude just jumps in front of me, opens his coat like in the movies and goes, you guys want a Rolex? You know, he's like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, uh, I do. Dude, like it's, it's sketchy. But then again, there's just like every place, there's really nice places. And then there's really fucking sketchy places. Where you make, like you said, you make a wrong turn and you're like, oh, fuck. I don't know. How did I get here? When I was knocking doors, though, man, that was, I was in the ghetto all the time. That's that's where I lived. So when you were doing that, what what state were you in? What, knocking doors? Yeah. Everywhere. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here, Vegas. uh, Let's see. I did Miami. um, Miami. Miami, Louisville, Nashville, Chicago, St. Louis, East St. Louis, Louisville. What was your first, what was your favorite place? To live or to knock? Uh, oh, good call. Let's say live. To live. I love Nashville. I mean, who R- does? Right outside of Nashville. Actually, if I was going to go back there, I'd get a little closer to Chattanooga. You get more so mountains. So funny you said that, It's yeah. a little bit quieter. Dude. A little more country. 
Nashville is kind of uppity and pop. Yeah. Like, no, it's not. No, it's more touristy. Like, if you're going to go to Nashville, like, oh, you got, or you're going to Tennessee, you got to go to Nashville, you know, but. The only thing really to see in Nashville nowadays, especially for guys, is you got to go, like, go close to the wings and look at the line of broads that are standing outside. They're just, it's all they want to do is get over there. They stand in line for like two, three hours just to take a picture in front of those stupid ass wings. Yep. The heck? Yep. Yep. (laughs) You haven't seen those videos or anything? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. probably pull it up. They're like, it's literally. Literally, and it, <laughs> yeah. it, it takes up the side of a fucking building, like wow. mural status. It's terrible, dude. It's like basic white chick one one. No, it's like, hey, if you're single <laughs> and you're trying to like meet somebody, go find the wings, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you got a good chance. You got a good chance. Yeah. Uh, no, that's so funny you said that because we've got our friends from Reload, and we know okay, uh, yes, quite a few different people who live in Tennessee, and you know, I've been a California native my entire life with the recent things that have happened and it's been a long kind of drawn out process with California and how things have been going out here. Uh, I've been, yeah, we'll talk about that, (laughs) but I've been, I would love to get the fuck out of here. Uh, and Tennessee is one of those places that have not been tapped into yet. You know, like Texas has been tapped into obviously Idaho is starting to get tapped into Oregon has been tapped into Colorado has been tapped into Tennessee is one of those ones that hasn't been tapped into yet. Um, I feel like Utah too. The Nashville area is really bad. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. But so what I was going to say to that is you're right. But if you, the closer you get to Chattanooga, like there's like, there's these Knoxville. little, these in Knox, exactly Knoxville. Like there's these little pockets where it's like, dude, you can go spend 300 grand, get eight acres, 10 acres with a nice updated house. And you're good. You're yeah. good to go. And it will, if, then if you cross the border and get over into just south of Chattanooga and get into Georgia, mm-hmm. 300 grand gets you like 100 acres. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mansion. It, it will, With then you get to Georgia and it's a little <laughs> different where you got to, I guess. It's actually not that bad. As soon as you cross over, you just go south of Chattanooga. It's the same thing. Okay. All right. Fair uh, enough. Fair enough. It's a little bit cheaper. Just you have that Georgia. To, be, to go back on your door to door salesman, obviously right. I can never do that. You hear most of the people that are still salesmen or in the sales industry, they started as door to door and yeah. it's like, it's like the foundation. It is because you know, it's a whole, it's such a fucked up world. Yeah, it is. And it's a grind. You have to like to, and I, I was scared to death to talk to people originally when, when I very first started, I was a technician for like a few years. <laughs> like very introverted. Like oh, yeah. you stay in your little, like yeah. your little bubble. That's first time I about. actually knocked a door, I was like, fuck this, man. These guys make so much money. I got to go do this. So the first time I knocked a door, I like got halfway through the pitch and I was stumbling. And, fucking all uh, and yeah, then I, I just told the lady, I'm sorry, and turned around and walked away. Yeah. I was like, nope, can't do this. Yeah. And, uh, and then eventually I started, I knew what I was talking about and everything. And then you learn to like read people and understand people. And then you, you learn how to, and this sounds really bad, but you learn how to manipulate yeah. So to, you can tell by their body language and where their like yeah. eyes are going, what you can say next and the kind of things that you can like, basically you can steer any conversation yeah. exactly how you want it to and get them to say yes to exactly what you want. And then all of a sudden you're making Good money. Like 50 grand a month, which is so, stupid. it was so interesting <laughs> though. Like, and you're right. It, there, it's, there's this psychological aspect to yeah. being a salesman where you read off their body language or you say certain things that are going to trigger certain things with them psychologically. And then like you, again, you kind of steer them in the direction you want them to go. And then like that, you got, you got your sale, you know, which is, it's, it's, I find it fascinating, but then at the same time, like you can just be a scumbag and you know, I just, (laughs) but then, well, yeah, there are, I mean, there's scumbags in every industry actually. True. You think about it, but, um, with the whole sales side of things, it, uh, there's so much money to be made and, and then you, it can take you anywhere you want to go Yeah, because then you learn to how to approach people. You learn to talk about anything. Like I've had conversations with the most random shit, yeah. like train sets. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That's the one that comes to mind. Like I've had conversations about anything that you could ever dream of and imagine yeah. out there on the doors. And then you learn to be obnoxious and change based on the demographic. And yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a good, it's, le- it's a good, skill set to have 100 percent, 100 percent, and that's where i turned into like a business owner and everything i still yeah. do the sales stuff and that's i guess what i see in a podcast is i gotta come on here and talk about shit and yeah yeah 
yeah. have fun. And well, that kind of that kind of leads me to my next note is like if you could just give the listeners like a little snapshot <laughs> of like what what you do. Like, Intro do ten do. minutes in, we're solid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so my name is Jeff Warren, <laughs> uh, from Idaho. I uh, on social media, I think it's what Relentless Hunter. We're yeah. HNTR. We get rid of the vowels at the end for some yeah. reason because it looks cool. Spelling's hard. Uh, it looks way cooler. <laughs> and who, who has time to actually spell it out, right? Right. I hate those long <laughs> social media names and everything. Like Spencer Kirk. Yeah, yeah like official is fun. terrible. Terrible. <laughs> fuck that guy. I don't know who that guy is, but fuck that guy. Um, but no, so now I'm actually completely shifted into the hunting and the outdoor and the fitness world. I mean, I don't look as in shape as normally I am, but the uh, you look <clears> really hot. <laughs> oh, thank you. Buddy. <laughs> Shit. It's the beard. It's, it's, the, beard. The, it's the beard and the hat. Dude, the beard and the hat will always do First that. cowboy hat, officially. Yeah, first cowboy hat in the fucking studio. Uh, oh, by the way, you do need to sign the table when, before you leave. Okay. Don't forget do to do that. that. Is that a felt? Felt hat? Is that what you call it? Who make, yeah. Is that American hat co or no? Justin. Okay. That's very solid. Justin I love boots? their boots. Yes. Dude, Justin makes great fucking boots. That guy Justin's got his shit together. <laughs> that guy Justin. <laughs> that guy Justin. Hey, I mean, can we get the me. Justin into the, the Justin. podcast? That'd be great. Probably could. He's they've been around for a long I time. So, I mean, there's gotta be they gotta just keep that name going, right? Right. The kids. You yeah. have to. You have to be a, there has to be a Justin <laughs> down the bloodline. Um, but so now I own like an online supplement retail um company kind of like bodybuilding.com but we're going for the outdoor space and cool. the military space sweet because nice. it's kind of that's that's a similar demographic mm -hmm. veterans hunting and everything and um and there's kind of a need for it because most people don't realize when you go and you per, well it seems like health and supplements and everything is getting even bigger now with covid like it exploded last year because everybody wanted to get outside and get healthy and everything mm -hmm. and try and avoid the whole what do you mean you just need a vaccine bro that's all you need yeah right <laughs> But then you still got to wear the mask. No, no, two no. Of them. Yeah. Two of them. Two masks, <laughs> a vaccine, and don't talk to anybody. Right. The, the good thing about getting into supplements is uh, FDA doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. They, they they do and they don't probably, right? They do. So that actually took place because of the state of Utah. Uh, most people don't know. Fucking this. Utah. <laughs> yeah. They did it. Ruining so back, it for everybody. I want to say back in the 80s, maybe it had been early 90s, the governor there was like so obsessed with... Uh, Steroids? No, no. He's, I don't know what it was, <laughs> but he he was the guy that originally went and he made like nutritional supplements where they weren't they couldn't be classified as medication or medicine, or uh -huh. pharmaceuticals, and they couldn't be classified as food. Yeah, and so yeah. they had their own like thing, and it couldn't be regulated by the FDA. So when a Fedra got banned in the United States, it was still legal in Utah for like two years. Dude, huh. side note: I used to take a Fedra. <laughs> that was when I was like high school, college. Dude, I got fucking shredded on it but it's literally legal speed yeah that's what it was dude people died a lot of people died you hearing that feedback yeah i don't know what's going on. i don't know if the lights or you see i'm getting a lot of echo from you today. really oh that's not good yeah there know. you go that's that, there we go fuzzy it's like, yeah there you go okay. it's we're good better. all right everything's fine so, yeah uh, i do that now and then okay. I, my social media is mostly hunting and everything i got into the whole sponsorship thing for a little bit and then now i like bailed on the sponsorship stuff. Like I still work with brands that I like and everything. But like you guys work with Reload and everything, and and you can go get sponsors from people. But there's just way too much pressure, especially in hunting. Like those are fucking animals out in the wild. There's no guarantee I'm going to shoot something. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. And my and my account really started as a hunting page, and I was like, dude, this is not what I just constantly want to do all the time. Like I'm not into that. And and of course, hunting is like a huge part of what I do or like it's definitely a passion of mine and I've really enjoyed it and I feel like there's a lot of great lessons to be learned there mm. but that's not everything I'm gonna be you know and so and again you're the relentless hunter uh but and I'm not trying to bag on you by no. means but I feel like okay. there's other things going on uh to to bring to the table just rather you know rather than just hunting. and that's why I like coming down and doing these kind of podcasts even the western contours podcast yesterday I kind of went way off topic we talked about all sorts of shit that's good and yeah that's and good. I, I enjoy doing that stuff instead of always being about hunting because there's only so much that i can talk about oh exactly and and let's remember uh, hunting season is three months out of the year four months we got bear, <laughs> bear season and turkey season right now up in yeah. idaho yeah so I mean, it's turkey season out here right now but that's the only thing going turkeys? on yep oh you can't hunt bear can you? uh yeah we can we can okay. hunt bear it almost Whoa. got banned that's right because i was like yeah. posting all sorts of shit about that whole yep. like, banning thing. almost got banned and then, yeah because yep. the guy was like 
whoever like introduced that bill was like some weird skinny. And it's always somebody who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, or it's like somebody who's never hunted a day in their life. And it's, and that's the problem what we have a lot with politics. Now it's like people making decisions on topics that they have no, they have no experience. in. Yeah. Well, I think the other problem too, especially with um, the left side or people, the anti hunters, I guess is they would rather pay the government to do it than allow citizens yeah. to do it. They want to be so detached from the whole process that they're like, you know what? They're, just take our tax money. Yeah. But, and, but they don't realize that hunters or anyone conservation, farmer, conservation if yeah. you're, they're the most generous and most uh, nature minded individuals you meet. Like, right. You, you typically oh, find them picking up trash or just always leaving as you left it. The nature, right. nature. Yeah. yeah, it's just, a, and you don't want the government poking around. No, Are they gonna no. start. And they, yeah, and less, yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, less government, the better. I yeah, I know you don't like you don't like my mic right now. Yeah, I don't know what is going on. I don't I don't maybe switch if you come up. Can we get that dryer? Well, yeah, I can turn it off. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah, it's like. I don't know. I can hear the fat, the little fuzziness. In the yeah. Going on. There you go. Spencer doing laundry. <laughs> That's one thing I don't do. I hate laundry. I have a passion. I probably need a girlfriend just so I can do laundry. La- have her do laundry. laundry. I hate it. I'd rather just go buy new clothes. There you go. <laughs> Disposable just underwear. Every, yeah, no shit. Here in the studio, there's also laundry going on yeah. right now. There's a, there's a weird echo. I don't know like why you a sound high, so. It's a, like yeah. a very high reverb. Can you of, turn your mic to your left shoulder? Let's try that. All right, okay. let's try. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. All right. Yeah. Well, I still hear it, but we're good. Yeah, I hear a little buzz in the back, but hopefully it doesn't fuck up our recording. What do you think, Paul? Is it going to be all right? No, we're still good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, I remember uh, you you started as a hunting page. Yep. Yep. Like years and, years and, and now again, it's like if yeah. I scroll through the explore feed, like every other day, I see Spencer's face somewhere. <laughs> the whiskey one, though, I'm a little jealous about. You did like a whiskey shoot or something like. That. Uh, I yeah, know. I did. I did do a whiskey shoot. That was like a whiskey shoot. But also with Wrangler. So that yeah. was in Arizona. Those uh, are uncomfortable for me. Really? Yeah, I just don't. I don't know. Lee's makes it where it's they're like stretchy. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Um, and I would, and I actually do have a Wrangler shoe coming up here, but oh, nice. they're, they're a lot of fun to work with. But they know, you know, obviously they know their shit. They're trying to, you know, they, they send you exactly what they want, which is actually helpful. They send you exactly what they want. Not trying to fuck around. These are the shots. Make it happen. And I appreciate that because sometimes, you know, there's a a lack of information when you're doing shoots like that where you're like, oh, yeah, just do you. And then you yeah. send them like, photos and you're like, we don't this want is, this. yeah, this is garbage. I fixed it. You fixed it? And I had Andrew's mic on. That's what it was. Yeah. You're not. It's your fault, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. And Andrew's not even going to be speaking at all. Right. And we're good. We sound, we sound good. We might bring him in. 20 right. minutes in, we're good. Well, guys, appreciate you hanging around with whatever the fuck we were dealing with earlier. Yeah. Uh, well, so, okay. I wanted to talk about hunting because I feel like, obviously, you and I hunt quite right. a bit. Um, you definitely are hunting. More intense a, about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely more <laughs> intense about it, which is awesome. I wish I could do the things that you were doing, but uh, I just wanted to, like, just talk about hunting for a little bit and, like, what it kind of... Me uh, or one, how did you get into it? And what are the kind of things that kind of drive you to keep doing what you're doing? Cause again, if you haven't checked him out on Instagram, like he's got some, like you've gone on some pretty fucking gnarly excursions with hunting. And so I feel like you're always hunting too. Hunting or gym. I was, yeah, that's pretty much my life. <laughs> that's which good. is why I started going, a company. Yeah, right there, going right? to so the it's gym like, to hunt yeah, and then right. hunting. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, and I guess you could get into that whole like passion thing for people because a lot of people are like, well, I don't know what my passion is. Let's yeah. go work this like shit nine to five. And then which is, to do. which is so gnarly to think like being that like, what, how old are you? 35. 35. Okay. So I'm 36. Yeah. Uh, fuck dude. When you get older and older, it's, it's so much harder. I'm 34. I'll turn 35. Uh, yeah. But so I'm actually about to be 37, but it's, uh, it's interesting because you think about it and you're like, dude, you get, you're almost 40 years old and I, I know I'm rounding up a lot, but like you're almost 40 years old and you don't have a passion or you don't know what you want to do with your life. But which is crazy. It's a crazy thought for guys like us, but there is a vast majority of people out there that are still like searching for that. Well, and you know, like I've asked a bunch of people because they're like, how do you, how do you figure it out? And I'm just like, what do you like to do? 
period. That's all you got to do. Ask what you like to do as a hobby and find a way to make it work. If you can find a job in that industry, there's enough jobs out there. Yeah. Like, honestly, though. Definitely. Especially even in the hunting industry right now. If you were to look it up right now, everybody's hiring across the board. If you want to move to Bozeman right now, there's like every single company. Dude, Bozeman just turned into another like Venice Beach, dude. It's stupid. <sighs> yeah. Like literally a, uh, a like a 1,200 square foot little studio. Okay, It's like well, well under 2,000 square feet. Three thousand a month, twenty five hundred a month. Not really. It's stupid, and it's zero updates. It's, it looks like a little shack. Mm. It's terrible, dude. Yeah, I've been looking up in Montana to move because I want to get out of Boise. Boise kind of sucks. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Like, yeah. It's just Boise's just. T- I grew up there, obviously. Okay. And then, uh, well, yeah, I grew up there, and then I left when I was like eighteen. I went back finally, like a year ago, and it's just it's just dry and desert dead you can't see the sun in the summertime because all the the fires from the northwest they like suck in all the smoke oh, comes in shit. you can't see the sun for like two months i spent some time in nampa yeah that's where i grew up nampa. Yeah. yeah went to line school there went to nampa high it was uh it was shout out what was your what was your mascot the bulldog shout out bulldogs shout out. <laughs> shout out. i'm surprised you don't say because uh i get called out not saying boise you gotta say boise boise, boise. yeah right who says that i don't know i don't know i don't how do, you, how do you say it? Boise. Yeah, Boise. All right. Yeah. I put a Z in there. Actually, I heard somebody like <laughs> complaining about that the other day, and I'm like, I fucking grew up here. I'm like, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just how I pronounce it. Yeah. Shit. Uh, well, I now, heard like Louisville. Cal- now, Louisville. Yeah. Like Louisville. Oh, God. Well, so there's a Louisville, Colorado, yeah. and they say Louisville instead it's of because they don't Louisville. know how to pronounce it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you go to Louisville. which one came first, the Kentucky or the Colorado version? Kentucky, guaranteed. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. So Besides, you got to go cares? through that's there. Where baseball bats and shit are made. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you call yeah the Louisville Slugger. Louisville. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's no, kind of cool. Louisville. Little, Come on. It's kind of a cool little museum to go to, the Slugger Museum. Oh, oh, I bet. Yeah, you get a little free baseball bat, a little tiny one. One of those. Uh, like, were you were you an athlete growing up? I was. What did, so what, I was a quarterback and a pitcher. I was supposed to go to college to play. So it was a. D1 caliber pitcher, and uh, my shoulder exploded my senior year. Weird how that happens. Right? <laughs> Throwing that gas. I was. So I was just like this little skinny. So I was six foot tall when I was in the fifth grade, sixth grade, and then I didn't really grow height-wise after that. But I think I graduated at 150 pounds. I was throwing in upper 80s, 90s. and Jesus. Yeah. Six foot, 150 pounds. I was like was lynch gum. Yeah. Like, yeah. But big time Timmy when you're a pitcher, there. like it's actually kind of to your benefit because yeah. all those arms and legs going all over the place it helps with leverage for sure. If I would have had any sort of muscle mass and like took it seriously, <laughs> yeah. I would have made it. But you're like you're pumping yeah. 96, yeah. It, like, I was a baseball exploded. player too, so I get it. And, and I was the same way. I was a fucking man child yeah. growing up. I was, you know, 170, <laughs> six foot. No, you see the photos of him? It's pretty funny. I have it. Dude, yeah, it's I fucking see. stupid. It's kind of funny. Dude. Like, like he's, oh, that guy's 25 in a little league. Yeah. <laughs> He's no one of those guys. Why huh? is that twenty five year old playing little league right now? Like right, I was, I was style, like, huge. Huh? I was, He's no, he was just like girthy and his square, his chin's all square. Yeah, and yeah, it's dude. like what the fuck? Like, what in the fuck? But then I stopped growing, and then everyone else started. But uh, I was the same thing. Like I threw really, really hard when I was younger, and then I was, I was truly throwing harder than my body could handle. Yeah, and then we all know how that happened or how that ends. You so know, mine was it out. I actually threw kind of more like Tim Lynchcomb style. Yeah. Like I had high leg kick yeah. drop the body. Like it yeah. was like unorthodox. Yeah. I was yeah. flailing. And then my high school coach was like, no, you need to throw like Strasburg basically. Oh. And it, I hate my it when body couldn't that. handle that. Yeah. And I, I, I think my, like I dropped maybe five, six miles per hour on my fastball and I couldn't get the breaking ball to break. Yeah. And it, it was, it was frustrating. And then I remember, I remember throwing a pitch and all of a sudden there was a pop. Yep. And I was like, what? I had that same what pop, buddy. And I then know. I threw it again. Yep. And my the velocity dropped like 10 miles an hour. And then I threw it again. And my right. shoulder went with baseball, basically. Right. Yeah. And it dislocated. And I'm just like, uh, <sighs> I can hate and up, it. It was painful. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's one of the worst pains. You'll ever Still problems with it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had to have basically complete reconstructive surgery. So if we, well, everybody's going to see. Like, oh, I can't lift shit. my arm up. Oh, yeah. So it's like Damn, gone dude. and I can't, everything was like yeah. sewn and stitched back together. The, so the knob of the bone that actually goes into the socket was busted in half like this way. Fuck. So they had to like do like a capsule release or something like that and put some pins in it and keep it all together. It was like, 
Yep. So I was done. So my whole dreams and everything, like life hit me hard when yeah. I was like 18 years old. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. What am I going to do now? Plan B. Yep. Door to door salesman. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Was- Washington State, actually, from there. I was a frat kid. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, got I was a never crazy. a frat kid, but everyone tried to get me in a frat because I was completely a frat kid, just <laughs> not in a frat. Uh, it was good times, though. I had great you Shout out to frat? Yeah. Oh, no. I don't even think, actually, they're Sigma not up Kai there anymore. Chai they got Latte. in trouble. They got, so my class got in trouble for selling drugs. Nice. Yes. In college. Nice. College. In college. So I actually, the, the kid, I, I, have, I know his name. He used to go over to Tacoma, and he would pick up, like, major bags of stuff and bring it back. And then... They got they got caught running drugs out of the house. I think like uh, <laughs> gotta pay for junior tuition. year. Oh, psh, yeah, he could have bought a mansion with yeah. him. He was pretty, yeah, that's really awesome. Fuck. Like, have and, you seen uh, the housing awesome. market out here? I gotta do <laughs> no something. <shit. laughs> and um, yeah, that was kind of that was kind of interesting. But yeah. I remember taking on as a freshman. I tried to like I threw like one. I think it was called what the fuck party, nice. and they let me like be in charge of some of that stuff. And that one was kind of a fun. I wore like a. Toga? The child's like onesie. It was kind of crazy. Nice. Yeah, I got a little wild. And then and then they let me host. I hosted a party. We got Andre Nicotine up there for a party on, in like the basement. I know that name. The, Why do I know that name? Yeah, he's a California boy. Yeah, California guy, right? Like NorCal guy, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And uh, he came up and did a, a, a whole concert underneath the uh, Pita Pit in the basement. <laughs> Pita Pit. <laughs> like those are just like frat Call stories Santa. where you're just like, this is so great. Where it's it's like like oh, people well, who were like weren't people before, and then yeah. they're like, oh, like you know, I had Post Malone in my fucking frat party. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Back before the tattoos? Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And, uh, yeah, that was shit. That was so long ago, dude. That's uh, awesome, dude. But yeah, I think my frat got shut down like a year and a half later or something <laughs> like that. It was one of the top like party houses at the school. It was That's fucking so out of control. That's so great. But I think like so the year before, or two years before, one of the frats like right down the road, they're the ones that got shut down for doing kind of the same shit. Actually, Steve-O. Yeah. Oh, nice. Like, Steve-O was there, like, running lines <laughs> on the front porch. And the, yes. the whole, like, the, like, campus, I don't know, campus cops or something showed up. And they were like, what's going on? And that's what shut him down. Wow. Steve-O. 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 Shut you down. Wazoo gets some, like, crazy stuff going on. Yeah. Like, oh, San Diego. I remember State having drinks with Ryan Leaf. That was interesting. Oh, Ryan man. Leaf. Yeah. He's a big Chargers guy. So Really? Man. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> faithful. Yeah. Yeah. That Somehow he's, he's still faithful. I don't know how. See, I'm a Titans fan. And I, I mean, yeah, I don't get anywhere either. So. Oh, I fucking at least love I got, the Titans. At least I, I got Derek Henry so here, like, yeah. running through people. Taylor, right Taylor Lewan, who's oh, an offensive yeah. lineman. So I'm a diehard Michigan fan too. So oh, that's like the greatest okay. draft pick of like, yeah, like yeah, forever. Taylor Lewan is like my spirit animal, dude. I fucking <laughs> love that guy, dude. He's I outrageous. Him. Yeah, he's outrageous. Uh, him with Bussin' with the Boys, him and his oh, other yes. buddy, Mike Compton, who they just run their own podcast. Mm-hmm. I have an old school vintage Budweiser bus. They just got picked up by, Bud, uh, not Budweiser, uh, Barstool a year oh, ago. Yeah. Dude, their podcast is phenomenal. But Taylor Lewan in general is just like. Dude, I mean, in college, bucks. he was getting kicked out of games. Yeah, he just yeah. like would choke people on the yeah, field. He didn't yeah, care. Yeah. And then he brought that up to the NFL and everybody gets mad at him. It's like doesn't care yeah. he's bigger and better than everybody yeah no and he got the contract so to prove it yep. so yep. Yep. Uh, no at one point he was like the highest paid uh offensive lineman at one point yeah, yeah. a like couple years until yeah, recently yep yep, yep. And oh, oh uh, linemen are making good money now oh fuck yeah. yeah and because people are starting to plug in and be like oh well if my quarterback can't do shit because <laughs> okay. yeah. there's zero protection then what the fuck are we doing here uh, i got running Tannehill. Dude, that's a good. He's story. not. He's not so. He's not bad. He was Texas A and M. Let's go, Giga Maggies. He was good at at Miami for like a year, and then he blew out his knee, and everybody like gave up on. Yeah, like right that's away. True. That that I lived down there in Miami. They were brutal. God, dude, you're 35, going on like 60 with your stories, bro. <laughs> oh, dude, I've done more shit than you can ever imagine. That's, that's awesome. why I'm like, I go out there in the mountains. And back to the hunting thing. I go out there and I like hunt in these crazy places. And I hunt by myself. I'm solo most of the time. And solo it's like, hunter. You know what? If yeah, <laughs> it's it's actually very peaceful. Oh, actually. I get yeah, it. Yeah. There's a lot of solitude that goes into. I do it. enjoy hunting with another person, but yeah. there is there's I mean there's a time and a place you know where yeah. it's like when you're by yourself and there's just nothing around. It's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. I pretty much say my goodbyes before I leave every year though because <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm coming you back because I I mean there, I've been through some shit like I've 
I remember falling down on a tree one time when I was trying to like get over the top and I was on the edge of this cliff. And when I went down, if I didn't have the pack frame that I did branch through the torso, it would have went right through the middle of my back. Yeah. Um, It was just like a a busted off branch on that tree that was that big and it it stuck into the back and I'm just like, Oh God. So I want to, I want to get into our boozing with the boys, but I also want to continue with that story because I wanted to ask you, um, like some like sketchy situations for hunting, but Boozing with the boys, so Paul can hit the thing. You did it, man. Yeah, you're welcome, We're doing guy. good. We got hey. audio fucked up first thing. Yeah, dude, Get we're the, good. Hey, you know, people are, people are, by this time. They know who we are. Yeah. Uh, do you have an order for these? Uh, dude, actually, yes, I do. So uh, we're trying with the ranch water from Carbach Brewery in Houston. I believe it's Houston, Texas. Uh, so it's not the ranch water that, like, is super popular right now. Uh, it's like a white can, but is oddly also... It's from Texas as well. Uh, so I was going to go original first. Check. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry. You got to bartend here too. Yeah, you got to pass, yeah. pass her down. Got it. Um, We're out of Houston now? Yeah. So this, I believe this is Houston. Uh, interesting little Astros can going on works. here. Uh, I like the logo. I, I truly thought this was the ranch water that a lot of people think about. Our, our homeboy Gary will be listening to this and he's like, he's all about ranch water. So this... Oh yeah, is what I thought was it, but then it said Carbach Brewery, and I was like, unless they got sold, this is probably not the same thing. And I thought they did like a a whole like revamp on branding, but anyway, pretty cool can. Um, again, Ranch Water Hard Seltzer. I thought we did start with the original. We'll see what happens. I mean, these are what four percent, four point five, four point five. Okay, twelve ounce. I like how it says recycled. Damn it. Yeah, there you go. And at least it's a true <laughs> 20 or a 20, a 12 ounce can. 90 calories. We're good. There we go. It's in the diet. All right. So. Sniff, All right, boys. Sniff test. Here we go. Cheers. Sniff, sniff. Smells like ranch water. It's not bad. Tastes like Sprite. That God, is a no. great fucking call because it does just taste like Actually, a just Sprite. Like a, like a, it's almost like a knockoff Sprite. Yeah. Yeah. Like a beefed up Sprite. Like not as sweet as the Sprite would be. Like the Sam's Club version or yeah, something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Stater <laughs> Brothers version of a Sprite. The brown label. Mm. I'm not mad at it by any means. That's good. That's pretty refreshing. Like this summer, that's going to be a fucking great drink right there. Yeah, that's a good drink. What do you got on that? You buying know. it? I've actually never had a seltzer, so we're like... What? I'm a whiskey guy. Well, this is period. not... Is this... Dude, this is the first. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, dude, we're sharing so many moments together. I know. Can we? I need to come down later. This is gonna be great. (laughs) Can't wait. Uh, Can't wait to rub beards together. (laughs) (laughs) Mine's a little short right now. It is pretty short. Mine's a little heavy right now, so I need to. I need to get her back to the the jawline here pretty soon. I need a fucking haircut in general, but uh, (laughs) we do it live. Yeah, we do a haircut live. That would be a great idea. Uh, So. (laughs) Going back to hunting, okay. I just want to, because again, you do some some pretty fucking gnarly stuff. I just want to kind of dive in that and and talk about some of like maybe some of the sketchiest situations you've been in, some of the like the coolest situations you've been in. Uh, where's just the best hun- shit like that? Best hunting place too. Yeah, give me the exact uh, coordinates. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd take people in there if they got enough points for yeah. Wyoming and a couple different places. I just hit four points for California, so I'm going to be heading for an X zone next year. I don't know what that is. So but. X zones in California are like. Like for California, cream of the crop. For what deer? Like yeah, deer. Deer. Yeah. Like black tail or mule deer? Uh, you're going like black tail, but. Okay. Well, I actually take that back. When you're going up, like way so so X so just California in a whole, California, Southern California where we are, dude. The honey is brutal, <laughs> but there's there's decent bucks out here, but mm-hmm. it's just there's few far between. You know, you go up north like. Northern yeah. Cal, like true Northern California. A good part. That's when you get to find some like actual bucks that you could compare to like a different state. You know what I mean? So yeah, this mule deer, mule deer and blacktail. But uh, when you're going like that far up, I believe it's all mule. Which I'm surprised because as soon as you'd like cross over to Arizona or you drop down into Mexico, the mule deer are massive. Dude. You, and there's nothing here. That's so funny you saying that. I got a buddy who actually works for Border, border Patrol. Mm-hmm. So in right here off of like San Diego and, and Mexico borderline. And uh, he sent me the, and they've got cams everywhere because of bodies and Whoa. bodies. Well, they call them bodies. <laughs> they, 
illegals. They call them bodies. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's so rude. They don't even call them, give them a name. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, he sent me photos. This was last year. He sent me photos of deer that were popping up on these, these cams. And, dude, they're nice. <laughs> like, but... I tried hunting out there a couple, like a couple weeks, like two years ago. Mm-hmm. They thought you were mad. But here's the thing. Border Patrol <laughs> pops up on you all the fucking time yeah. where it like becomes a kind of a bust yeah. because fucking they're, they're getting, they're trying to get to you. And half the time you don't even realize they're getting, trying to get to you. Can't and you like just, tell them to put out like a signal and just be like, Hey, yeah. I'm out here. Like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll like, here's my a, identification <laughs> card. I am illegal. I'll wear a tracking illegal? device if I need to. And e- and legal. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so I was about to go on a hunt actually not too long ago. I still might go on it, but they take me in a helicopter. They drop me off on the Rio Grande. And I actually got to cross over into Mexico and back. Dang. To get on to. They had the drug ads. cartel for me. That'd yeah. be nice. <laughs> so like going back I'm like, to, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, <laughs> going back to watch. Dude, I can't wait to watch the movie that they base it <laughs> on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Like, well, right now, anybody's allowed in the country. So. I mean, I could probably get it. It's true. Said, yeah. Trump Thank stopped God they me. stopped building that wall. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. been so great. Everything's so great at the border right now. Yeah. Everything's just, fine. Everyone's fine down there. You have any opinions on that, oh, Jeffrey? <laughs> we're going to get into that side of things. Dude, fuck yeah. Dude, on the potty mouth, we fucking say whatever the fuck we want. We'll get into it. We'll do the hunting stuff first. But, All right. All right. Uh, Fair enough. But <clears throat> when you're talking about the border, um, he sent, again, he sent me photos of like deer that he was catching. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, dude. Like those are some. There's nice crossing back bucks. and forth. Yep. Like, yep. Yeah. But like Fish. really, really nice deer coming out of there. But they're never up here. They like don't make it the whole what, hundred miles. Yeah. Not well, even that. Out here, we do have a mountain lion problem. <laughs> uh, That's true. Fishing game. You can't even bring them. I found out yesterday. You can't even bring them in here. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You can't go shoot one somewhere else and bring nope. it in here. Nope. They have a problem with them too. In that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, downtown LA. Uh, downtown LA. Or actually, like the Hollywood sign. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. infamous. Malibu too, where everyone hikes. Well, which is <laughs> funny because you can't hunt them, yeah. but they will eat. but somehow our deer population is just dwindling. Yeah. Yet when people you know go turn in their tags, all these people aren't fucking. They're all coming up empty. So like, hmm, I wonder what's taking out all the deer. Mountain hunting. Maybe See, the <laughs> thing that you can't fucking hunt is taking them out. Yeah. I think everywhere right now is having a mountain lion problem though. Like Washington's really bad. Idaho is getting to the point too where they're bad. They're, Idaho has so many predators that we can't like touch. We can't figure out now. Yeah, wolves. And we don't. Wolves are so wolves are bad, and everybody wants to pin all of the blame on wolves. And they keep saying like, "Oh, there's these hundred and eighty pound dogs running around." And they don't get that big. Not in Idaho. They, I mean, really they, like one thirty, one forty. Yeah, one thirty ish. And but. They, because they brought the wolves from what, northern Canada and the, the Northwest Territories and stuff like that, and some of those dogs get huge. The yeah. world record's like two hundred thirty pounds. God, God damn! damn dude. Imagine, <laughs> fuck. imagine staring down the barrel. Two hundred thirty pound dog running yeah, around, just gonna like murder people. But then I tell people, I'm like, think about it. Like up there in the flats and like Alberta and stuff like that, and it gets what negative forty. Yeah. There's ten feet of snow. Like the deer are three hundred pounds for a reason. Yeah, they got to survive that. They got to survive that. And exactly. same thing with the wolves, and they don't have to go climb mountains or anything up there. It's just fucking flat. So, I mean, when you get down into Idaho, a two hundred thirty pound wolf is gonna die if he's like huffing oh, and puffing yeah. going yeah. up over the mountains. Yeah. So it's just like a big fat dude trying to climb the mountains it's not gonna work did you see that uh <laughs> that uh cam footage it wasn't even a video it was just a still photo of a mountain lion that was looked like it had been doing steroids for three years oh yeah oh yeah. you see that one it's infamous it's like rolling around the internet for a long time but dude you saw it and like it's like stride it's like in mid stride and it's just like ripple <laughs> like <laughs> muscles just rippling down the arms and you're like dude if i saw that i would shit my fucking pants <laughs> are you kidding me and the fact that if I saw it, it would probably be too late because those things work right. in the stealth mode. And packs, too. You know, like when you see no, it, no, it's no, probably cats. too late. No? Cats don't. Wolves do. Oh, cats are by themselves. Talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The cats are, it's, they're solo guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cats well, scare me. They make me Coyotes, nervous. like they're, those are the guys who are like more the merrier. Dude, mountain lions, they I even like, well, coyotes sometimes, but they don't hunt in the pack really. To the, I, for the most part. What we've noticed down here is like they'll, they're the, they'll do like the, the decoy where they're like, Hey, like come over here. And then the gang's waiting yeah. for him over there. So yeah, I, like, yes and no. Like they, they, they talk d- back and forth. Oh yeah. Um, I yeah. remember going, or even this, this year when I was up trying to track uh, a couple different like 
packs of wolves and whenever you howl you hear coyotes everywhere yeah they're lighting up all around you but dude it's such a it's such a crazy sound too that they make the wolves are way worse really yeah it's it's the most like bone chilling yeah. sound in the world Gosh. and so that would be one of the the weird sketchy ones so i was uh shit this is like five years ago right outside of boise like 20 minutes outside of Boise. I packed in. I was like, hmm, I was probably like seven miles at the time. I, I, I set camp at 10 and I came back and I was chasing the mule deer buck around. He's, he's like, fuck. Doe caught me. I couldn't get a shot off. Okay. Bitch. Dude, when a, blo- um, a doe blows you, it's just like, <laughs> oh, she's dead if I can get a shot off. Dude, I don't even care yeah. at that point. Like, I don't care how big the buck is standing there. If she blows at me, she's yeah. dead. Yeah. yeah. She needs to go. Um, but so I like snuck around. I knew where the deer had gone to, uh, the buck and a couple does and I had stuck them back around. I was in this like little pine tree, uh, thicket, I guess you'd call it. And then all of a sudden there was, there was a little bit of movement in front of me and I couldn't see what it was. It was really thick. And then maybe like 15 yards to the left, a wolf howled more right at dark. And I did, and my dumb ass left my firearm or my sidearm back yeah. at camp or oh. not even at camp. It was at the truck, like 10 oh. miles, seven miles away. I was like, Rookie I'm not getting move. that. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, yeah. and I just had my bow and, and I have a hatchet. That's like a quick grab. Oh, God. So it's got a little ice pick in on it. It's my favorite, my favorite hunting tool is the hatchet. So I like grabbed it. I'm like, we're, we're just going to ramble yeah. this shit. Yeah. We'll brand yeah. we'll brand the hatchet yeah. real quick. Yeah. yeah. We'll Shout out to the hatchet. <laughs> I don't even know. Saw, no, it's not saw a Gerber or something like that. The Gerber saw, yeah. yeah. S O G, yeah. Oh, that's, like, that's a good one. No, uh, they're they're pretty legit. Yeah. So um <clears throat> but yeah, that that one made me nervous. There were cause there was multiple dogs right there. Yeah. Like three or four of them lit up and my Oh like, fuck that. I dude. was yeah, that wasn't any fun. My sketchiest ever was probably one of my first years bow hunting and my buddy Eric and I were hiking up this mountain like four o'clock in the morning, pitch black, and we hear all this this rustling in the back and we shine the lights and there's just this, these two eyes just staring right at us. I'm like, that ain't a deer because it wouldn't be hanging around. <laughs> it's something that's checking us out to see if we're a fucking, if we're for breakfast essentially. Yeah. And we're just yelling out, get the fuck back, get the fuck out of here. You know, trying to make noise and finally it takes off. But then like we weren't even like halfway up the mountain by then. So, and of course I'm in, I'm caboose. So we're we're hiking up this mountain, and every ten steps, I'm like <laughs> looking behind me, like like, uh, like am I going to be the first one? <laughs> Let's switch spots, buddy. And that was before I had like a sidearm, and so I'm like I'm gripping this little like Gerber knife that's like three inches. I'm like, yeah, this will this will <laughs> this will help me say, out. Yeah, so <laughs> postpone my death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will just delay the inevitable of me getting mauled. That'd we'll, be great. Pull, what is that, Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie? What movie is that? Uh, Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nailed it! We're, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Kills a bear. Out there. Oh, yeah. what's that? What the? Oh, there's a, a bear that? on the boat. Uh, Romeo and Juliet. There's oh the shark. No, the, the one the with the beach. bear one. Tom the Hardy. Oh, Tom. Oh. The bear one. Fuck it. Just oh, uh, what is it? Revenant. Re- yeah. Revenant. Yes. I couldn't hear you, dude. dude that fucking that bear scene that gives me fucking <laughs> dude. sweating. That's, that's dude. I would yeah. have died. Oh yeah. I wouldn't have lived. Good for him. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Dude, that movie's done. fun to watch, but it's fucking hard to watch. Oh, like, dude. Oh, dude. Especially when you bear hunt, because yeah. that shit is completely a reality. I want to know what that dude that took care of him was fucking eating, like, stuff in his wounds. That shit was gnarly. That's, a, that's badass. That's crazy. Though. I need American to learn that shit. stuff again, because, you know, with the world ending and shit, that yeah. I need to learn, like, all that, like, natural medicine. That's some good Absolutely. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, the more you can be off-grid, the better. Yeah. Oh, I've already Especially got places the- picked out. I'm probably one of those crazy bastards. Like, that's half the reason I bought horses. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> You're really not that crazy anymore. Yeah. It's like all sure. the people who were, like, saying all these <clears throat> conspiracy theories back in the day. And, like, oh, They're fuck. like. Fuck, some of those are actually not that far <laughs> off now. now. Didn't they be writing books, doing podcasts? Oh, like, yeah. Sure, some good yeah. stuff. Yeah, dude. And and so uh, my wife's uh, biological dad, they got divorced pretty early on, but uh, he he was saying some fucking crazy shit early on. And we were like, ah, yeah, whatever. Like, okay, it's just him being him, whatever. Now it's like shit's coming out, and you're like, Dude, wasn't he wasn't he talking about that like two years ago? <laughs> Weird, man. It is. It's a little bit sketchy. Yeah. Makes me nervous. That's so, why. That's part of the reason. Like, I probably stocked up on everything from seeds to horses to seeds packs. To horse, seeds, that's, ammo. Seeds, that's smart. That's seeds, smart. Yeah. Ammo. 
arrows. What kind bows. of arrows? I actually changed bows just so I could have something that's self sufficient and I can change strings in the back country without having to press. Uh, so I went to APA. Are you doing trad or no? Huh? Trad no. bow? No. APA is a compound out of Canada. Oh, got it. Got so, it. and then is all they have. They have this little pin where you pull the string back, um, put the pins in the cam, and then you can change nice. all the strings. You, you can change need everything. The, you no don't need, need anything. The, uh, the bow press or anything right. like that. Yeah. Right. So, and I've been in situations where like a, a bow's jumped off the string or you have something like blow up in the middle of the back oh, yeah. country. And yeah. actually last year when I was riding in on the horses back in Wyoming, I'd like, cause I have draft horses, so they're tall. <laughs> I mean, we're 17 hands or whatever. It's like six foot tall shor- shoulders and, I, the bow was like sticking up behind me and it would catch a tree branch and I like yep. halfway ripped me off the horse. I thought the <laughs> bow was going to be like fucked up. So, and I was like, well, if this Hoyt blows out, then <laughs> I, I got nothing. Yeah. I'm going to have to call it a day on my hunt. So, yeah. um, trying to go something a little more self-sufficient and that way I can like survive back there for a little while. So uh, two years ago I hunted straight trad bow and that was awesome because uh, like I really, something about the trad bow, I got him hanging around here, but, um, Something about the trad bow is like the simplicity and the minimalist in me just like loves the idea yeah. of it. But fuck, man, you got to get so goddamn close. Dude. <laughs> that was your claim to fame for a little bit there. Yeah, the yeah. Trad, people, I remember people trad, love the trad, trad bow. Trad bow man. hunter in yep, California. Yep, yep. And I did a whole season. <sighs> Public had, land. had a couple close encounters, but I could never seal the deal. And it's just, especially out here, it's so tough because it's so dry. And like you're trying to put a stock in and it's just like, Dude, all you hear is like, <laughs> like, dude, it's, it's terrible. So you like, you really have to put some thought into where you want to set up yeah. because you're not going to be able to put on gnarly stock on. You're just out, at least out here. And in my, my opinion and my experience is like, you just got to find a good spot and just set up there and hope and pray that you're in the right spot at the right time. If you can pattern them, sometimes you're yeah, right. They're not true. like whitetail. Whitetail are sporadic as well. Yes. They go all oh, over dude. the place. I, but mule deer, yeah. sometimes they'll stay on a pattern consistently, and they don't change that. Yeah. They're right there. They're going to be there every single day as long as nobody bumps them. Same thing yeah. with elk. Like, I can figure out an elk, and I can figure out the whole situation within, like, uh, give me a day or two. Like, I went into Wyoming. I had no idea where I was going. I'd never been in there before, and I was on elk within. 24 hours. That's awesome. So I called a bull into 10 feet. That shit was crazy. <laughs> I passed on him too. That was, what? that was even worse. I had somebody with me for like the first five days or six days or something. And uh, when that bull showed up, cause he was so close, I couldn't range him. And I just looked back at her and I was like, should I shoot or what? And she was yeah. just like, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a blast. You're doing but, your own butchering and everything too. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. well, half the time I'm so far back in there. I have to actually butcher it mostly back in there you, so you, i gotta bone it out and it, okay and then so, and you're packing it yeah. out and then you just leave everything not like <clears throat> scavengers and then you're taking the the horns and, and everything i take right. the head the horns and, and, and antlers and, the and everything yeah uh and, well some states require you to take a lot of it back in right like so i can't remember what some of it 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 Every state's different in yeah. the amount that you can take out. Like, you don't have to take, like, the bone out, but you have to have, like, proof of sex, which is weird because yes. even if even if you shoot a bull with a head and antlers and everything, you still got to take the nut sack out, so, yeah. which is kind of weird. Yeah, you got to yeah. show the balls, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You, you got to put find... them in your mouth when you get there. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs> <laughs> the, um, and But, yeah, for the most, some states require, like, neck and rib meat. Some of them don't. Like, actually, one of my favorite things, I've only done it once, was to do a rib roll in the backcountry. So I, like, dig a hole. We put, like, some coal or you burn, like, a bunch of trees and stick it in there. And then, actually, I'd use pine, which, actually, pine's not so bad with with the whole taste. Interesting. Most people would think, yeah, it's a little bit rough. but. I mean, when you're eating dehydrated fucking meals for 10 days, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is great. Yeah. It, because a rib roll on a on wild game and everything, it has no fat yeah. at all. So super lean. Yeah, it's really lean. It's really tough. But if you if you cook it like right away, it's actually really good. Here's a question. I, obviously, I'm not a hunter. Um, is the pres- preserving the meat? So you're going obviously the the meat when you when you're when you're harvesting when you're butchering, it's warm from blood. Right. And then you put it in a pack, it's still at a pretty warm temperature, then it's... Depends. Like, your your goal is to cool it off. Because right. depending on what time of year, like, I've had... Yeah, depending on time of year, you want everything to be, like, cool down as much as possible. So, getting it off... And you're, th- you're thinking about this, right? Like, this is... this Because oh, yeah, you're, 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 you're conscious about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, because you get your kill, When you get your kill, you're like, got to get this back to camp, right? Sometimes. Okay. Like... It, 
So the bull, usually my first thing, especially on elk, elk have this like release of some sort of enzyme in the body sure. that they create bone rot like that. Wow. So I shot a bull last year in November where he went down. I watched him. He was still alive as like it got too dark to chase him. Wow. And I, he was just laying there. And by the time I got back there in the morning, he was, and it was 14 degrees. So it was cold. Cold, yeah, yeah. yeah. And where normally you'd be like, great. Yeah. Like it's a, that a cold, like the, the meat's going to be fine. <clears throat> so I got there the next morning and he had moved like two feet and he was dead. And I don't know when he died or anything like that, but I mean, the, I guess you're in the middle of November. So it's a little bit longer on the night, but we didn't get there more than an hour after daylight. And I had already lost like 20, 25 pounds of meat because the bone rot had started to set in. How'd you tell? So How can you tell? You, it just it gets all black. It, it like, smells. So, yeah. yeah. It smells. It has like a, like a real dark. Is it, is it's it, not is dark, it dark. It's like reflective green. It kind of looks like a green head oh, mallard. Interesting. So you know how like a, a mallard. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing. Like, I've gloss, never like, seen like it. that glossy green. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah. and it, it, yeah, it, it's kind of, but it'd be pretty easy like, for you to tell. Obviously, yeah, you, yeah. That's the bone rot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, and it, it, sometimes it kind of, it starts wherever it's the warmest, I guess is, could be the thing. So I wouldn't have lost that whole elk, but I know a person, I have a friend of mine last year that they shot one in September and yeah. they couldn't find him. And the next morning they went back in and he was dead. And, um, it was like mid forties, low forties or something like that. They lost over half of it. Sure. He was gone. So you could, and, and an elk is a big animal. Yeah. I mean, a bull, a decent bull is 600 pounds. So you're getting 200 and some odd pounds off of them. And you're, you guys are comfortable. I'm just, obviously I'm a food guy, but you're, you're just, as long as it didn't turn that color, it didn't get that bone right. You're, you're, you're okay yeah. with it. All right. Yeah. Just cook it right. Yeah. I mean, and wild game is best cooked, like rare. Sure. Medium rare. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it has to be and and people it, that overcook it. You're go to hell. Yeah. yeah. Go to hell. No, absolutely. <laughs> because no, I've had like, Oh, I got this back strap and it's a fucking hockey puck. And yeah. I'm like, dude, what? This, this is not the way. <laughs> this is not the way it's supposed to go down. And we finally did a smoke and a sear on some deer backstrap, and it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. See, I've had situations in September where I've shot a bull, um, and it was hot. It was like 70 degrees outside, so I got to work overnight because he went down right before dark, and I got to work overnight to get all that meat off the bone or else I'm going to lose him. And then the next morning, I don't, like, I'll sleep next to him underneath the tarp, which people get all freaked out about some of that shit. I'm like, I don't care. Um, Wait, you, why, why, why? Well, he because guts I don't it wanna, and he sleeps yeah. inside of it, kind of like. <laughs> oh, like Revenant? <laughs> I know I know people that have, they've slept with, like, the hide and everything because it's too cold and they don't have anything else hey, to, like, dude, stay when warm. you're in the wild, we you do some fucking weird you. shit. Yeah, and okay? it's very true. We do some weird fucking shit. But. And, um, <clears throat> but that bull in particular, like, there was no way... It takes me probably three trips to get a whole bull out by myself. Oh, dude. And we're talking oh. six, seven, eight miles round trip sometimes. And it's going into a cooler, more. right? Or Yeah, I mean, when you get it back to camp, you're going to hang it and try and cool it out or anything that you can to try hang and it get in the shade. Just as yeah, long as you're off the bone, like right? Off the bone. Then yeah, you, you want to get it off the bone, but, I mean, if it's too warm, you got to get it back to town somehow. Yeah. Um, but I remember that one bull in particular, I was like, when I woke up the next morning, I was like, I'm not going to get everything back before he spoils. It's too hot out here. Yeah. So my goal was to get to water. So if I could find some sort of mountain stream close by, which actually was probably close to a mile away, I had to take the entire bull down to water and wrap him up in a tarp and set it in there because that water is ice cold. Wow. It kept him cold. Wow. That's but it makes it makes the hike out like significantly. That's all dense with yeah, water. It's, it's a pain in the ass to get out, but that's the only way that I could save the meat. Fuck, dude. So because my dumb ass will go anywhere. And that's part of the reason I hold stay in shape sort of a thing. So I can, yeah. Are you keeping, are you, are you like, is there a limit? You're like 10 miles from camp. You're like, okay, I got to draw the limit. Like, <laughs> no, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> 20 miles. <laughs> I'm just yeah. like, fuck it. Just keep going. Yeah. Now that I have going the horses cell phone is no service. <laughs> oh, I prefer no. Well, yeah. yeah well, most of the time I don't have service. Well, that's, there. that's kind of the rule it's of the thumb. Like thing. if you're really into hunting and it's like, you got to keep going where other people are not willing to go. Sometimes. Like there is Colorado right now is to the point and I'm probably giving away secrets, but I don't hunt Colorado. So fuck that. <laughs> um, right now, everybody that goes to Colorado, they're like, I'm going to pack in 10 miles or 15 miles. Well, the elk figured that shit out. Yeah. Wow. And so they go to like three miles and they stay quiet and they shut sure. up and people sure. just walk right past them. They're like, You don't have to go that far. They're just set on uh, that 10 mile mark. Yeah. And That's people good. are like, Oh, I got to go back this far or anything like that. And one of the places that I've hunted my entire life, actually, I killed a bull in there every year for God knows how long I could still go do it and, and drop a bull in there be Hell's Canyon in Idaho and there's going to be people right now clicking what the fuck's Hell's Canyon <laughs> uh, and 
now there's so many people that go in there and they're like, Oh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to hike in there and I'll get back there. I'm like, Holy fuck. It's like a goddamn freeway. Wow. Uh, I got like tent cities back here. Uh, I mean, you guys are used to the tent city thing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> nice little jab there. I like it. I like it. Downtown LA. Yep. A little pretty much everywhere kind these of days. Ball, actually. Well, dude, we yeah. had a fucking Disgusting. situation by Angel Stadium out in Orange County. That was bad yeah. news. Um, a little mini skid row. Nasty. But yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so I I get back in there. I'm like, fuck, there's so many people back in here. I mean, I can still get it done. I know what yeah. they do. I'm smart enough. I've been around the animals long enough. I know the area. But it just it's just like frustrating because people oh, are going yeah. back there, they're blowing them out and it makes the elk go into different places. And then you have to figure it out and you're just like, uh. yeah, my, but you know, more power to them yeah. at, at the same time. If I see somebody way the fuck back in there, I'll shake their hand. I'll be like, good for you. Good luck. Sure. Yeah. Like I'm like, I'm going to be the guy pulling the bull out. I don't really care. Yeah. Like, I know what I'm yeah. capable of. And I'm good at what I do. But usually if I don't necessarily mind giving my spots out half the time, just because you know, you know if I'm going to see somebody yeah, back there, yeah. like tip of the hat. Yeah, exactly. Cause and, and I'm kind of the same way. We're like, dude, I'll, I'll help you out. Like I'll, I'll tell you what I know. And, and dude, if you can seal the deal and figure it out, fucking more power to you, tip of the cap. Um, but, uh, I always enjoy when I do go far in and I do see someone and be like, tip of the <clears> cap, <throat> dude, you fucking decided to go on quite a fucking journey just like I did, you know? So it's almost like a little, a weird camaraderie kind of a deal where you guys don't know each other at all, but you both know that you went in some some shit to get to where you are right now. Last year in Wyoming, I was like, it was anywhere from 10 to 15 miles back every single day, but I was on horses. So I was way back there. I didn't see anybody after, after Laura left, I was there for, I don't know, two weeks by myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't see anybody for like six or seven days. And then I remember I was, <clears throat> I was exhausted the one day and I took the horses out to chase this one bull that I was after. Cause he was, I actually missed him. He was like, God, he was huge. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so I, it's dark or it's basically dark and I'm riding skyline back to camp and I'm exhausted. I'm like, Hey, what do you mean skyline? Skyline's like the it's top of the, the ridge. So oh, okay. basically the only thing that you can see is the sky above where just kind of glowing up. Yeah. So like, if you look at a mountaintop or anything, if there's like an animal walking on the very top of the mountain, mm-hmm. and that's the only thing you can see that skyline. Oh, gotcha. So <clears throat> I'm like riding skyline and it's, it's soup. It's almost completely dark. And I'm 10 miles back in there. I'm like hunched over the saddle. Like I look like one of those guys that's basically dying in a Western. Yeah. That's like hunched <laughs> over the saddle. Like <laughs> when they ride back into town or something. Yeah. So that's what I look like. Cause I'm, it's like, I don't know. I'm over two weeks back in there. And then all of a sudden I like look up and there's these three guys back here and I'm 10 miles from the middle of nowhere. And they're just like staring at me. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? It was, it was just trippy. But at the same time I was like, well, good for you guys. Cause I come back here on horses, but there's no way in hell I would walk back here. Uh-huh. Cause I was so far back in there. It wasn't even that bad of a hike, but it was just like, I mean, there's nobody. It's probably the most peaceful thing in the world. But then when I see somebody back there, I was like, oh, shit. Shocked. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I did not expect to see a person there. I would have, I mean, a bear or a deer or something else. That would not a person. But yeah, a person. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Uh, dude, so I've been going back to the gym because uh, typically I was, I was like Spencer. I was like a garage guy, yeah. garage warrior. But um, <laughs> something I've seen um, a lot was uh, hunters on the stair climber. And I've recently found a love for the stair climber, but I don't have the pack. Obviously, but dude, the stair climber fucking is. See, bad. I I don't even use the pack half the time on the stair climber. I use the uh, the tack plate carrier. Oh, there you go. So and but I'm trying to redesign a new plate carrier that's a little more vented because I think it's hot. Oh yeah. But <clears throat> I'll do the pack once in a while because I've had I've carried packs out that are upwards of 200 pounds, and yeah, it sucks. Dude, it's, the it's stair climber is a oh, it's beast. Sucks. I, I love hate it. it. I did a I did a post on my stories the other day, I was asking which one's worse, like stair climber or uh, the salt bike. No battle, ro- battle ropes. I love oh, salt battle ropes suck so much though. Yeah. God. And, uh, actually it was almost 50, 50. I was surprised. Yeah, Dude, no, yeah. I, I would be, yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Cause so I, th- I thought people were just going to like blow up the stair climber and it was going to be like a 75. I, I thought it was just one of those chicks who wanted the big booty, like type of thing. No, but there's, there's some, it's, it's whoopsie. A, it whoop, yeah. Well, it's funny though. It's like the, and I wanted to talk about fitness a little bit, and I guess we're kind of steering into it, but like battle ropes, like you think it's just 
upper body, but it's really not, dude. It's all balance. It's, yeah. Balance is a big thing. Yeah, because you can uh, do everything on it. You can do squats while you're doing double battle rope. You can do all these fucking things. You can do lunges. You can do whatever. And, dude, those things absolutely destroy. It's kind of like an assault bike. Yeah. It, it, I feel like it's the poor man assault bike, right? <laughs> you just need a big-ass rope, and then you're right. good to go. But, dude, those things will crush your fucking soul. They do. They, And I think they're good for hunters because we have to have the back. We have to have the shoulders, especially bow hunters. Yeah. Because you go 20 miles a day for 10 days in a row, and then all of a sudden you got to take one shot. Yeah. And you got to be ready to go. And it's not pack, like you, it's not like you got a rifle where you can take a 300 yard shot yeah. and like it, steady your breathing and yeah, everything yeah. like that. You got a screaming bull in your face at like 10 feet. You're like, Oh my God, yeah. please yeah. might as well be a <laughs> mile away. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it's the battle rope. So I, I have a love hate thing with them. Yeah. I enjoy them, but yeah. you got to be coordinated oh, too. I mean, we were, if we were athletes, like, I don't know if you've messed with the battle ropes or anything, yeah. but yeah, if, some people are just so uncoordinated they can't handle it. I have find that very hard to believe you can't figure out a battle rope. So I mean, okay. So I, I was seeing this girl. Own, I was I seeing this girl in Montana. <laughs> she was a power lifter. She could not do battle ropes. What? Yeah, could what? not do them. Which is so yeah, odd. She because, could not like. I mean, no, she's just uncoordinated as it gets. Like lift, like anything. Wonder like girl squatted three hundred fifty pounds. Yeah. yeah, but she couldn't do a battle interesting <laughs> i was about to say well like that takes coordination but it really doesn't because i was thinking about olympic lifting where you're like cleaning and snatching and i love like that, that too yeah. I love it. I do. dude olympic lifting man when you when you see someone who's like really good at it yeah. you're like god i'm not i'm not I, I won't i'll flex i'm a flex my high school coach was uh um an alternate for the 96 olympics so i learned everything nice. so I, I can actually slang it. even today i slang some uh some clean and jerk and uh people were like you get kicked out of your gym no, <laughs> no it's like, but it's funny because uh, all the purple playground, yeah, like, yeah, purple playground. <laughs> all the uh, all the the curls and the mirror spots are all taken. Yeah, you know? but those the Olympic curl, weights, curl in the squat yeah, rack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what, anyways. Are we ready for round two? Yeah, what you got? Dude, we I, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, let's do original. Let's do the lemon prickly pear watermelon. Oh. Yeah, let's do the, the they, they call it the my oh, the Meyer lemon. Yeah, yes. Myers lemon. There you go. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. My bad. Uh, oh, you gave us the prickly pear. That, That's fine. Oh, no, Whatever. No. That's fine. Cancel me. <laughs> Canceled. I think you said prickly pear lemon or something. Like oh that. no, I said yeah. Oh, okay. I said lemon prickly pear watermelon. Uh, okay, so he's <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. So here's the watermelon. It's just straight watermelon. All right. All right. We're good. Uh, agave prickly pear. I mean, this sounds delicious. It does. You got you got your you got your right, deal right. there. Yep. Okay. It's kind of fruity. Kind of fruity? All right. Yeah. What is I that? see what you mean. I'm okay with it. Ooh, I like I like flavor. Bad, see, like, people it's are like, oh, white claw and fucking this and that. I'm like, no, like I I actually enjoy flavor. So where'd you find this these at? Is okay. Dude, staters. Check. Dude, staters is kind of elevated lately. <laughs> so there, I saw a lot of things that um I want to try later on. Um, Let's go. Shout out to me for taking the first piss today. I know. Paul, I'm excited. I'm glad. <laughs> want to bring it. So, so Jeff doesn't know about this, but as soon as oh, is it happening? Yeah, it's happening. Right <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, dude, you got all the obstacles. Um, so, Paul, he when he breaks the seal, seal it's over. It's Just over. Every it's every, every ten minutes. minutes. <laughs> but here's no. But here's the kick. Here's the kicker. <laughs> he's not going to be gone for longer than 40 seconds, which is so bizarre to me. Just, like it is literally one of those things, like everybody who's in here and we do a podcast and he breaks the seal and his peas take literally <laughs> 30 seconds. It's just like, how like Brett Ian shout There's out no last ability to hold last guess. He was like, you didn't take a piss. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way you actually took a piss. And so anyway, it's a good time. But, uh, it's it's a good it's a good shit talking point I should say, uh, but he's already back. It's pretty solid. That was yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's quick. Uh, so he didn't wash his hands. There's no way. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Not. So touch it. Put it in your mouth. Put in, put my fingers in your mouth right now. Uh, Dude, I don't know what your missus is cooking, but it smells. <laughs> what does it smell like? Uh, it smells like like a bread or something. It smells good. Not in this household. God damn it. No, it's good. <laughs> 
Carbs. Uh, we're trying to do that low carb lifestyle. Need carbore diet over here. We're talking about yeah, right? So yeah, I I should have I I'm, I'm, I'm like ninety percent carbs. I should have brought a carbivore. bunch of like elk meat. Oh, yeah, that was time. that was a fuck up on your part. I'll, I'll come back. Give okay. me like a month and a half. All right, fine. I got to come back deal. and do another contract, or we'll sit with the production company and deal with their whole like bullshit. So or manufacturing. Dude, that'd be a lot of fun. It's and this guy, this guy knows a thing or two around a barbecue and a smoker. <laughs> I'm a so. great cooker. Or cook. <laughs> yeah, you cook. Started okay. off on a, yeah. on a good note super, there. Super confident. I I'm do a, a lot of cooking and I'm stuff. I'm a great cook. I mean, we already talked about doing a rib roll on the ground yeah, in the middle yeah, of the back. Yeah, Dude, yeah. that sounds good. If yeah. I can do that, then I can cook on the ground. Yeah. Now, wild game. I mean, that's a different and big so, game. So he's it a big is. barbecue guy. But when you start talking wild game, oh, it's a different story. Yeah, it's a different story. Yeah, that's why I was asking. I'll brown sugar and honey. There you go. That's classic. Good. I'll try to pick your brain about the meat. It's, I mean, it's hard to fuck up brown sugar and honey. So, wild game, I figured out too. You like a lot of people will cut butterfly steaks whenever yep. they make it, yep. or they'll send it to the butcher. Never fucking send it to the butcher. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. Do you don't know yourself. if it's going to be the same meat coming back, and they're just, they're just going to hack it. Yeah, 100%, they're going to leave the film on it. It's fucking accurate. tastes like shit. Um, but if you cook it or you cut it similar, like all of your cuts should be similar to like a backstrap or yep. anything. So, it's just like a big chunk of meat and if you cook it that way and then you slice it what is that like a filet mini yeah. kind of a thing yeah yeah so that's the way you got to cook all wild game because then you can make it everything will be tender it doesn't matter where what part of the animal it comes off of it'll, it'll stay that way you got a freezer full of meat oh Apple? yeah i shot two bulls last year i'm by myself that's 400 pounds of meat. <laughs> What's i gotta breakfast? eat more than yeah <laughs> i gotta eat more than but a pound of that shit a day just eggs. to make it <laughs> yeah just to make it make sense uh, but dude, elk is really fucking good. I wanted to ask you, like, dream hunt. Like, where? What do you got? <clears throat> have you already gone on your dream hunt? I haven't. Okay, no. Yeah. Um, Neither have I. So my well, I've so got a lot. I did like, the you've dream been hunting hunt. a lot longer than I have, but I, I still, uh, yeah, mine's still on. I mean, the, I didn't even start doing this kind of hunting until about ten years ago. That's so still a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. So it, um, and that's part of the reason I did the whole backcountry like horseback DIY hunt last year because that's, really that's cool. everybody's dream yeah. hunt. Yeah. And I'm like, well, fuck it. I haven't been on a horse in 10 years. I'm just going to go do it. And I, I went and rented horses. So they weren't even mine. I had to like <laughs> figure that shit out. It was yeah. really bad sometimes. Um, <clears throat> I actually had the horse get caught up in his lead rope and he went down on the oh, trail and that fuck. was a whole shit show. But I got it figured out. And I mean, I've been around horses, so it's kind of like riding a bike after like 10 minutes. I figured it out. Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> my dream hunt, actually, I think I'm going to try to go do it on or go on it next year is a drop camp caribou hunt in, in northern Alaska by myself. Say, dude. By myself. It, that's dude, it. That's I don't want awesome. anything else. If a bear gets me and we got to do this whole like Leo shit, like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm going to have a camera up. So hopefully somebody finds dude, a camera okay. and, because I'm just going to die. Out if there. that that's happens, we'll do we'll do a, a <laughs> we'll do a whole slideshow of you on this podcast. <laughs> Remember, just yeah. in yeah. case. Just in Verbal. case. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny, though, you said Alaska because, dude, that's so many people's. Actually, go-to. if we really want to get down to it, I would prefer to do it in Norway. What? Yeah. Is hunting even allowed? Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. They have moose and reindeer, caribou, yeah, up, yeah. like all over the place. I was going to say Canada as well, dude. Canada's yeah. got everything, dude. It does. So I was up there a couple years ago. Um, I was trying to date a girl up there in Alberta. <laughs> Shout out to that girl. <laughs> Shout out to Long Distance. Still, try, still trying. Still actually. trying. Still trying. She's hey, probably going to watch hey this girl. right now. Hey, girl. <laughs> She's probably going to watch this. Be like, oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> or listen. But Hey, he's still trying, so, uh, so I maybe, up, like, figure it out. I hey, went up there. We got a Canada flag. Right there. Oh, yeah. right below you. Right below you. It was meant to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was up there, and... Uh, Can we become a dating podcast as soon as this happens? <laughs> <Yeah>, matchmaking. <laughs> there was... Um, like in the same field that she was hunting whitetail and everything in, there's moose, mule deer, elk, grizzly, wolves, everything. And it's just like, this is just a fucking trip yeah. compared to what I'm used to. Like you got to go to very specific areas to find different animals based on what you want. Like there's a whitetail are very select and few in different parts of the state of Idaho. And yeah. up there, it's like you can see anything at any given point in time. I did I did whitetail in <laughs> Arkansas with the trad bow, and that was, dude, trad bow in a tree stand. <laughs> I almost took, I almost took a shot. Uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a doe, but it ended up being the sm- world's smallest <laughs> spike Button in the buck. world. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I had a lease in Ohio once, and they were like, if you shoot a button buck, it's a hundred fifty dollar fine. Like, you just got to pay the farmer, basically, yeah. the landowner, because yeah. they don't want them shot. And yeah, it's uh, like we had a buddy that was up there with us. He shot one. He didn't even know what it was. I'm like, you're fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be me. Well, and 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 <laughs> sorry to sorry to I, I want to hear your story, but it is really hard though because each state has all their own fucking rules. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you go on websites, it's like looking at the DMV website. You're like, yeah. dude, I, what the fuck am I looking at right now? Like, I don't know how to digest this. It's yeah. it's very tough. So you end up talking to people who are locals, and then some people don't want to fucking tell you what the fuck's going yeah. on. Hunters are very angry people right? towards each other. Right, yes. It's They're like, great. like it's I love that the conservative one group. side, and I love everything about hunting, and I, I've met some amazing people in hunting, but they're, uh, we talked about it yesterday at that podcast. Like, they're very angry. Yeah, but, I feel like, but I feel like you guys can make the connection through Instagram with a local hunter, wherever you want to go. Like, put, put it out there, and yeah. then you're going to get that connection. Yeah, yeah, usually. With one person. All you need is that one person. Yeah, but I, very true. I mean, I try to... So, last year was this year that... This big year for me, because... I had always gone into the same place over and over and over, and I always shot the same, like, I always shot something, like a bull. Wow, like a bull. poor you, jeez. <laughs> Spencer, let's eat some of that meat it's, you got. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> so where exactly was that? <laughs> That's fine. I'll give you the coordinates. You can go in there. I don't Sweet. Um, it's actually not that hard to get to. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Actually, I got to get... So, one Just my, drop me one in. Of my, so one if of my could, no, 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 pull the this. back the so bow one back of my, for me. That'd be one great. of my my elk hunting spot that I went to for years, and everybody's like, "Oh, fucking backcountry." Well, yeah, because I fucking walk back in there. But where my base camp was is right next to like a national monument. There's a shitter there. Fuck yeah, yeah it's want. the best place ever because yeah. they, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't even have to take a shit in the woods. Yeah. It's got to go up to <laughs> yeah, I got to go up to the outhouse up here that they keep like it's. It's nice. It's a big concrete building and everything, and they Let's keep go. it stocked with toilet paper. Fucking and toilet paper in there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. nice. But I mean, then I'm hiking in there like six, seven miles. I'll yeah. spike camp. I'll stay underneath like a tarp or whatever. It's it's pretty. It's rough. But so, anyways, I was always going in there, and the elk kind of got boring to me because it was the same thing every single year. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, another elk. God. So yeah. I killed three. I killed three. This bulls is like the within- equivalent of like white privilege going on right now. <laughs> hey, whatever. This is elk privilege. Is what's happening right yeah. now. Um. So three years and like back to back to back years, I killed a bull within 500 feet of each other. God damn. Dude. So they were always there and I'm like, okay, this is fucking boring. So now I got to prove boring. myself. I got to go out somewhere where I've never been. I got to do something that I've never done. And yeah. so I went, I took that Wyoming hunt. I kind of knew where they were at. I went in there for one day in July and I saw a whole bunch of bulls and a bunch of cows and shit running around. But then I took the horses back in there. That was the very first time I've ever done that. I'd never been on a guided hunt. It was just like, you know what? I got to get in there and prove myself. And I ended up shooting a decent bull um, after 20 some days. I ran out of food. So that was the only reason That's I shot him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. So I literally ran out of food that night. I took the shot. Uh, well, so I had one more morning worth of food. And then I was sitting there at camp. I was letting the horses like graze. And this the whole herd basically ran through camp. No I'm shit. way back in there. And I was like, fuck, do I go? Or because if, if I if I go, I got to eat the rest of my food right now. So I have the energy to go do this. Yeah. And so I did. And it was like two miles down there. I caught up to him. And then I, I laid underneath the tree for like 45 minutes. And then I had a bull come up. Um, I was, I was literally laying in elk. Like they were like 10 feet, 10, 20 or 20 yards or less than 20, yards, like 10 yards from me was one of the cows. And I'm like, kept peeking my head up on this tree. <laughs> I got a picture of it. We'll, yeah, we'll look at it. Um, <laughs> so I'm laying underneath this tree. And then all of a sudden, and I was trying to shoot the herd bull, and the herd bull ended up going down after. How do you know it's the herd bull? He's the biggest? Yeah, he's the biggest. He's the one that, like, runs everybody off, tells everybody to fuck off. He's the loudest. He's the alpha. Yeah. Wow. Basically. Um, and Take they, a note. the herd bull ended up going down. He scores 372. Like Damn. a week later after I left. That's a huge <laughs> score. On a, yeah. So. Yeah. Boone and Crockett I, is, I like, yeah. record book. Yeah. So, Boone and Crockett. So, they please, make. Please preach like, about that because it's. Uh, again, down like, in SoCal, you're like, I don't give a yeah. fuck. So there's it's got there's fucking like, antlers. There's down. <laughs> re- record books and everything, and so there's a Pope and Young, and then there's Boone and Crockett. So Pope and Young is archery only, and then Boone and Crockett is anything. Like, oh. It's as, as big as it gets. So oh. and Boone and Crockett is technically bigger because it's it's easier to shoot something at a thousand yards than it is to yeah. shoot them at ten yards. Gotcha. With a bow. And so the cutoff line for an elk is 
three hundred and seventy five inches for Boone and Crockett. Now that's like if you were to take one of the deer here and measure every single inch of antler. Oh, you gotcha. you like you that's take those, inch. you know, like the tailor. Yeah, like yeah, where it's yeah, yeah, it's literally. <laughs> so I mean, every single little. I shot a bull this year that had. Like when I stand him up on his nose, he's six foot tall. What the fuck? fuck. To the end of his antler. Jeez. So that and he scores a three thirty. This bull. Oh, three seventy two. Yeah, so he's Holy way bigger. Holy smokes! <clears throat> At least and seven feet. Probably. No, I mean not height wise, but he had like longer tines all the okay. way. Across. So Dang. and it's yeah. So he was he it's was a, a monster. big old boy. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but so I shot I shot that bull. Um, I didn't shoot him. I wish I shot him. He never gave me a shot. I had this other six point run in and I kind of knelt up and I had to take the shot because I didn't realize it was the wrong bull. And he went down right there, but I didn't have any food left and I was exhausted. So I remember one of my friends texting me because I had one of those Garmin in reaches. Yeah. Reach anywhere in case I do something stupid and hurt myself. Um, <clears throat> and they, my friend, I told my friend that I, I shot one. And then they text me like three hours later. They're like, how's it going? Like, have you gotten him kind of boned out or anything yet? I'm like, no, I'm eating. <laughs> so I had to like cut chunks off of this elk yeah. just because that was the only food yeah. that I had. And I was tired. <laughs> it's so much work moving oh. a 700 pound animal around uh, by itself. Yeah. I mean, get Spencer down here and lay him on the ground and try and move him. It's not easy. And oh, then you get like that. three of him going on. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit who, tough. Who taught you how to hunt? My dad, kind of. So growing up, hunting was <laughs> a little bit. It wasn't what I do now. We basically rode around on four wheelers, and then we That's like would a glass kind of hunting. Yeah. We would glass with binos, and then but he we saw some. It. He started. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, him and my uncle and everything. That's kind of where I got started and and learned like a love for it. They don't really hunt that much anymore. They kind of stopped. I don't know, ten, twelve years ago, sure. and they were all rifle hunters. So you would kind of you walk down through the brush and then kick something out and shoot it at I don't know a couple hundred yards maybe. Hand. And you're you're strictly bow, yeah. Yes, now I am. Yeah, I did the rifle thing for a long time, or for a little while, and then I built like a big 300 Ultra Mag, and I took a shot at uh, 600 and some odd yards, and the animal didn't even know I was there. It was kind of boring. No offense to anybody out there that shoots distance. No, and and but. and that's the kind of thing. It's like I'm not going to talk like. And again, we t- <laughs> we you said it what 30 minutes ago. The hunting community is its own worst enemy where oh, they, are. they are literally biting at each other, but you're all in the same space, which is so crazy. And it's they one of the few it. spaces where they don't unite. And, and again, you, you find like you and I, like yeah. you find people who are cool with each other and they're not opposed There's to helping <laughs> each other out. But at the, but more times than not, again, there's really fucking cool people, people out there, but more times than not, it's like, go fuck yourself, dude. I'm yeah. not going to tell you where I go, or I'm not going to tell you my equipment, or fuck, what, you know, whatever I mean, they, it is. Even that, they, they just like to talk shit on yeah. people. For, and I think part of it's jealousy, part of it's oh, who knows it's what. It's 100% jealousy. It's ego. It's ego it's driven. So ego driven. I, so ego driven. I love ego-driven. the hunting community. I love it. And yeah, I, I, it's a big make, money. I make, a, I make a living of a hunting in that industry and everything. And I love the people that I help and deal with and everything. But, for a while there until shit, what was it? 2019 was the year that I shot that big six by seven on film. And, um, of course there's somebody be like, Pfft. yeah, but high like, fence oh. or fucking, oh. <laughs> you know, like some, so before some that, shit. Though, before that, I would always shoot five point bulls. Cause you know what? I couldn't ever get the shot off on the big bull. And then all of a sudden I'm running out of time. I got like a day or two left and I would shoot basically the first raghorn that came in. Cause I wanted to fill the freezer. Like I don't like to buy beef. I don't know where that shit comes from. Yeah. I don't know what they pumped into that animal. That's yeah. when you talk about barbecue guys yeah. where yeah. they they don't technically know where it's coming from. Unless you're buying half a beef from like a grass fed place that you Exactly. Know. And and that and would be the goal, right, Paul? Right. Like yeah. is, the, is and and we've got a great spot out here in Marietta. Yeah, Primal Pastures, shout out Primal, to them. Yep, Primal uh, Pastures. Farm raised regenerative yep. farming, which is which is something I'm I'm on board with, but obviously the price point is a little off. Yeah. Um 30 Thirteen dollars for a chicken versus three dollars from a chicken. That's uh, from a. a they don't tell me about price. Like you want to know what one of those like pounds of elk meat technically costs? It's yeah. like fifty bucks a pound. Yeah, yeah no. That's when you add everything else into it and the experience and whatnot, but yeah, yeah no. I mean, I would, I would absolutely spend money on stuff like that. And even oh, when great, I buy yeah. beef now, 
Um, I can't even remember the name of it, but there's a couple places I know out of Idaho where they're selling, they butcher and sell right out of their place. That's yeah. awesome. And that's, that's where you need to go. I mean, it tastes so much better. Too. No, it does. And it cook, it cooks <laughs> better. It's a better taste. It's, and it's healthier. And, and, and for your point, asking you if you butcher, butcher, that's, that's great. I mean, that's, yeah. That's that's self resiliency at its finest, and, and being able to to have those life skills. I wish. I mean, as as a, as a barbecue or uh, a hobbyist, for me not to know how to butcher or harvest an animal, I feel a little cheap, you know. So it, it's pretty cool to hear someone who goes from taking the life to respecting the animal's life uh, and enjoying it and, and letting it nourish you. And um, see, and I think there's some of the hunting industry has a very like big disconnect on what they're doing when they actually shoot an animal. Cause you see those guys out there jumping around hooting and hollering, like they just scored the fucking touchdown of the super bowl or something. And I'm like, dude, you just killed something like, and I don't like to use the word killed because it, I don't know if I just have, I'm just too emotional or what, but yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it, it's a harvest to me and that's what I did. And, and you know, you got to respect the animal. You got to respect the life Absolutely. and everything else and what you did. Like I've had situations where I've shot the animal and I've walked up and they're still alive and it's oh, yeah. tough. It, that's a, it's a, a real situation. Right yeah, like, it's real <clears throat> I remember one time and I'm going to tell a story and people are going to freak out, but I remember I shot a doe when I was like 16. It was last year that I could shoot a doe. And this one like almost made me not want to hunt again. I feel like I know where you're going with this and I just, should I even tell it? it? No, oh. tell it. Okay. Tell it. Yeah. So tell I shoot it. her and I'm, <clears throat> I, I leave my rifle where I was at because that was, I was actually really close to the ATV and I was like, you know what? She did. She dropped like that. <laughs> she wasn't moving. And <clears throat> I walk up there. It's a couple hundred yards and I just have my knife cause I knew I just got to gut her and drag her back. And when I get right to her, she lifts her head up and looks at me. Oh, fuck. this! And what are you going to do? Are you going to walk all the way back and let her suffer and get your <laughs> rifle and go shoot her again? No. So I slit her. Yeah. I put my head against her and I said, I'm sorry. I love you. And cut her throat. <laughs> that sounds like a horror movie. Like, no, but it, like those are things it's, that like it's, people uh, don't under, don't like, fucking uh, understand. Maybe not. I love you, but I appreciate this and yeah. thank you and everything yeah, else. Thank and you. You know yeah. what? It's and it's harsh. And you know that was a very. I mean, I've never shot like I guess I've shot cows since then, but uh, cow elk, not, not a beef cow. Yeah, when he says cows, it's like <laughs> yeah. cow we is gotta the name for a female. Yeah. I'm not used to yeah. these like non hunting posts podcast sometimes but yeah. yeah it was that was something that i had to kind of live with for a minute and i was like yeah. you know what that was very i was upset at myself yeah, and, very, and, yeah. and Dude, that's a for making a bad very, shot very real situation right there because it does happen and sometimes people just they're so far disconnected and you know what i think part of it is growing up they've started hunter and it's not a bad thing to start your kid hunting at 10 it's not. No. I think it's great no. because they learn the tradition. But at that age, we don't pro- we don't process like life. What's happening? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't process life. We don't process the meaning. Like, and I think that's probably why kids got to go to war at eighteen. Yeah, because they don't. We haven't fully matured. Our brain hasn't developed to that standpoint. Well, something I started understanding when I started hanging out with Spencer, uh, because <laughs> you know, uh, coming into a, a, a hunter like Spencer, Liv and I close to each other is Spencer identifies as you go to your supermarket. Like typically most of Southern California would, it's a, it's a faceless killer, I think, or a faceless, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. And, and, and you just, this is just like uh, grabbing lucky charms off the, the, the supermarket, yeah. you know, but you have yourself where you've seen this animal, you came up with this doe and it was still alive. It looked up at you mm-hmm. so that connected and you had to finish which yeah. you yep. did which and you started, yeah. which started. And then a month later you're, you're eating that, that beautiful creature yeah. and you're, you're, you're thanking it for sustaining your, your life. Right. It's amazing. <clears throat> it's connecting. And I taught, I actually, I mentioned this yesterday too. So when I was like 17 or something, I was working construction and we had to go do, uh, it's like a fiberglass ceiling or whatever in a place called Simplot. And oh, I fiberglass. Know, Fuck that. <clears throat> I don't, so the reason that we had to do this, and this is going to sound terrible, but the reason that we had to do this, Simplot is a, a processing place in Idaho and everything for meat, for beef, cattle, and yeah. everything. And on the kill floor and the butcher floor and everything as they're processing everything, the, the 
when they're running the saw blades and everything. So the, the fat buildup on the walls oh, and the ceiling fuck. was so thick that they had, it was not passing OSHA standards. <laughs> oh, <shit. Dang. laughs> That's nasty. <And laughs> so That's they, had nasty. To, they had they had to clean it. <laughs> they had to clean it. And then we had to go put like 30 feet up. We're standing on like planks and everything. We had to put the, the plastic and, or the fiberglass and everything onto the seat, these big sheets of fiberglass. And we had to, to line everything so that way it could be cleaned. Like squeegee, basically. Oh, and man. we had to go in there the day before because we had to do it in 24 hours. But we went in there the day before watching the kill, like on the kill floor, watching them what they do. And they're just hitting them with that nail gun. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow. And, and that was that was a shocking experience. Oh, because, and sure. I mean, I'm sure there's documentaries where you can see it, but nobody's ever like going to see that shit in real life. And nobody fucking talks about it no, because they, they don't, don't want it because no, it's such it. a hard thing to understand. What do you think you think about if it dies in nature, being hunted by a wolf or uh, any other predator, it's very wars or uh, nature's metal. That yep, that that, yep. that, dude, that shit's hard. That shit. Uh, dude, you. I I honestly like it. I have a very hard time watching a lot of those videos <laughs> yeah. because yes, it is nature and it's nature doing its thing. But like, dude, nature ain't. It, this is my oh, favorite. This is my favorite thing. A non-hunter saying, "I can't believe you killed that. Let it just die in nature." Do you think it just like goes on top of a mountain when it's in old age and it's like, okay, everyone bows down yeah. to this old ancient animal and it just rests like in peace? King no, over. when you're fucking weak, guess what happens? Everybody else knows you're weak and they're going to be the first ones yeah. to fucking nail in the fucking coffin, dude. So, That's what's going to happen. That doesn't even, with those big predators now, that, does, that shit doesn't even happen. I posted a wolf story the other day on my uh, Instagram account. There was like 10 dogs ran this like healthy six point bull elk down and slaughtered him. Jeez. And Eating it's, its fucking insides while it's alive. It's probably alive for 20 minutes oh, yeah. of that. Of that. Yeah, but, Actually, but so shooting it or throwing an arrow through it <laughs> is so inhumane. Yeah. Yet in so, reality, if we do this, this just let it be world. in nature. nature, you know, like let it <clears throat> die in nature. It's the most painful, grueling, brutal so thing most you've ever people, seen alive. Most yeah. people don't know this, too. A lot of those animals go through such trauma during that process of being killed. Meat spoils? No, they, uh, they die of a heart attack. Yep. They have basically, they freak out to the oh, point where yeah. their heart and everything is pumping so bad and they're trying Adrenaline to like survive and everything that it kills them that way. Hour, yeah. So that's how they die. Oh, and, so... We got anything else to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Okay, so if so, we're on the beef track, how about this whole uh, non-beef yes. world that we're going to have? Let's talk on. about that. Oh. Let's also crack a third beer, eh? Oh, man. Third uh, Celsius. What's that? Great, great oh, yeah. We're just going to move over to that. Uh, well, which is super funny that, that you this know, just the whole plant-based thing. Bath. <laughs> bath. I have problems. <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> He's been watching too many Biden videos. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the whole yeah, plant based teleprompter uh, movement is so bizarre to me. I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, but it it's it's so funny because they're like, oh, it's so much healthier. What are we doing here? Not really. Limon, it's the Limon. lemon. This is the lemon, right? This is the Meyer lemon. Lemon's a tough one. I don't like that flavor. Yeah, much. but this, this you know, Lining Kugels back in the day, they had that. Oh, do, was really dude, I'm, I'm still all about those. <laughs> Here we go. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Just drink another one for. I only got a little bit of that. So. That's, That's just not bad. Pretty mellow. Pretty mellow. I like I like hearing Jeff's because he hasn't had. Yeah, um, he's not a big. I mean, it's very similar to the lime one. I mean, we're kind of in the whole. It's mellow. Sprite it's mellow. thing, almost. Uh oh, here we go. Round two. <laughs> Thirty minutes. Oh, left. you're playing with cash money right now. You're playing with the house money because I went first. I went first. <laughs> yeah. In fairness, in fair. Do you hear that? In fairness, uh, I did drink about three natty light or natty ice before this. Okay. So, uh, but <clears throat> last thing I wanted to touch on hunting. Okay. Pack yeah. dump. What do you got? What do you like, what, like, what are some things in your pack that you must have? And we're not talking about arrows or fucking all that kind of thing. But, like, if shit hits the fan, what do you got in your pack? 
That was literally 20 seconds. You yeah, fucking that asshole. didn't even. Ha- did the door close? That's what I said. I told you that. <laughs> I told you that. It's like that didn't even happen. <clears throat> water filter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As yeah. we're talking about water. Yeah. Water filter. Okay. So, what about? so two, my question was two pounds a minute a year. No. A couple things <laughs> that you two pounds a minute gotta day, have shit. in your pack. Oh fuck. Gotta have it. And we're not talking about like weapons or anything like that. We all know we need protection and you all need have things that you're going to kill something with. But like this things bug? that you got to have in your pack no matter what. This is a bug out bag or hunting bag, whatever. Kind hunting, of I'm talking bag. like in a hunting situation. Uh, well, either or both. So, yeah, same situation. I, I would feel My like, packs are I feel like a lot similar. of things would overlap there. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, um, your whole like Flint fire starter. Fire Learning starter. how to do that. So before you all. got here, he said... Water filtration. Water, yeah. water filter. Because yep. not what, very often can you figure out where like a spring, a natural spring is. You're what do you, way the fuck back in What are you endorse in the life straw? So. I use uh, Sawyer. Sawyer. Yeah, Sawyer. Shout out Sawyer Sports. I, I should have worn the pink shirt today. Oh, dude, I was wearing their, their crew <laughs> their crew neck uh, sweatshirt all day today, but my son decided to throw up all over it. <laughs> Sawyer. So <laughs> there is, one of the brands has like a, a battery operated like, pump filtration system that's kind of nice those. i've seen those it's heavy it's great with yeah, the horses it's i can take it with the horses bulky, but. but yeah if you if you're rolling with like horses and stuff you i can, can do see some. i'll take where, cast iron back. yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, when well, you got do animals working for you <laughs> like fuck dude i'm packing the heater <laughs> you gotta do a donkey <sighs> nope my uh, my Stubborn father-in-law jackass. has nope. been has been <laughs> grooming goats for the last fuck three years. goats. Oh, fuck field crap! I can't stand that de- those. I call them devil children. They got the little horns. And yep, I nope. hope they don't listen to this. But if they do, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I hate those fucking. Uh, field craft goats. had a guy on there that raises those breeds, bred them specifically for hunting, and, and yep. it's like pack goats. Yes, pack goats. Yeah. But it's specifically like he's crossbred them. I can't remember what it was. It was it was a good podcast. Check my horses. Scared to death of those fucking things. We ran into them in the, in Wyoming twice trying to get out, and wow. it was a disaster both times. One time was in, like in the dark. So when you're riding on a horse, it at dark or in at night, you can't use like a headlamp or anything, so you don't know where you're going. Why, you why just not? have to try because they can't see. Like, they can they can see at night, but yeah. you have that light. Then you but find that them. light's gonna flash, and yeah, it's gonna blind them, and they oh. don't know where they're going. Dude, I'm learning so much. Some shit. It's. It's a crazy experience actually riding on a horse in like in the middle of oh, the yeah. night. In the middle of the night, you can't see anything, but you're just like, I'm gonna trust them. Like, <laughs> hopefully, we end up. Back well, you camp. really don't have any other choice, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I mean, you could you could get down and like yeah. lead them all the way yeah. back, but who the fuck's doing? That's why yeah. I have a horse. He's gonna yeah. carry my ass back. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we ran into the last night actually with the the my tow horse had all of my camp and the entire bull and antlers and everything. And we had this little devil child come running down the trail devil child. and it was like hop. You know how fucking goats do that little hopping yeah. thing. Like they're the happy. I mean, yeah. it looks like something out of a horror movie. Yeah. Like their <laughs> eyeballs look like yeah. goddamn you marbles. You want Adderall? Terrible. <laughs> fucking, it's fucking terrible, sick. dude. And, uh, my horse is freaked out. Like yeah. we're running. They were, yeah, they, my tow horse almost threw me off because he's trying to get by my horse. I got draft horses. They're this wide. And, yeah, it was just a nightmare. And uh, I had to let the one horse go. And, yeah, we hopefully I could find him. And it was just, <laughs> I got a question for you. Uh, so Spencer and I did ha- did try, and Spencer's had it, uh, Mountain House. Um, yeah, yeah that's going to fuck your whole inside. Thank you. Yeah, it tastes so good, though. It tastes, it so tastes good. all right. But so they're just... So I'm a big fan. Heather, Heather's choice. There you Love go. her. Heather Kelly, uh, out of Alaska. Yeah, I used to. She do makes that. some some good stuff. It's a little bit spicy for me sometimes in the back country. <laughs> Heather, you got to fix that. Come on, Pam. <laughs> um, I've told her that a hundred times, but her breakfasts are great. Uh, I uh, so I was gonna say their packaroons are their probably yes. their go to. The uh, breakfast is my favorite. I got in trouble for selling it because they got hemp seeds in it. And people like freak out. Oh, oh fuck my off. god! Fuck right? off. <laughs> You know the world. No. Yeah. No, it's um, so funny. Cause I did a solo hog hunt probably three years ago now yeah. uh, in like central California. And I remember my last day, packed it in. And right before I got in my truck, I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to shit my fucking <laughs> pants. <laughs> and I took the weirdest, <laughs> gnarliest shit in my entire life. And what I had been eating for three days. Yeah. Fucking mountain house, dude! It just tears your up. Well, so up. 
all those dehydrated meals though are going to be really high in sodium. That's yeah. the only way you're going to preserve, preserve it. For, yeah, yeah. Like two and, years, and all of them are super like high cal normally, right? Because Usually. you need to but see have a the mountain, cows to go. A mountain house, they need to redo their packaging. They at need least. to do a redo of a lot of things. <laughs> See, I Shout think, out Mountain House. We think, did them live on, yeah, on the was, show. That was good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we so, literally cooked it on the show and ate it. I think and it was delicious, but <laughs> it'll fuck you sh- up. Struggle for a little bit. Yeah. It, I think Peak Refuel is kind of the same to me, honestly. They're not much different. Peak Refuel, uh, they're good. Again, see, I think it's, it's really, okay. Honestly, I think Peak is, and people are going to be pissed at this one that I'm saying this, but <laughs> I think... The, Peak has like a cult following at this point. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. They're good. I'm not going to lie. I, I enjoy them a lot. They but taste, but I think that, I mean, it tears me up just the same as a mountain house does. That's fair. I, I don't think that they're, fair. I don't know what they're, how they produce what they're doing. Everybody, some people are like, no, they're like a couple Natural. guys yeah, that are working it's hard. A, yeah. And I'm like, no, they're not. They're fucking pumping out a ton of shit. That's, yeah. there's a production line going on. Oh, somewhere. for sure. Um, <clears throat> I, I struggle with that one. There's a couple guys out of, um, California, actually, the Bay Area, uh, Shout out. Next Mile Meals. They're a keto. Uh, Let's go. So they're a keto. I, I hate I hate keto. hate it. How dare you? <laughs> Mike turned it off now. Yeah. So keto is not, keto is not, I don't think it's good for you unless you're doing like a competition or something like that, the keto diet. But in when you're hunting and everything, the high fat and everything does really well for you. Uh, so they make some really good meals. They, they bring in some quality ingredients, but. Yeah, that mountain house thing. So I'm going to challenge you because oh, I have tried every diet under the sun <laughs> okay. aside from like vegan, vegetarian, <laughs> okay, fucking bullshit like that. Okay, <laughs> or uh, vigilant, uh, vigilant humble. Yeah. Said you're doing the 75 yeah. vegan. This guy like started a fucking joke that decided to spread like wildfire. Like, oh, I'm doing the 75 hard as a vegan. What? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, but. I have always reacted better energy wise, physique wise, just lower carbohydrate diet. I've done both. I've tried to track. I did what two and a half months of tracking of just like, oh, you want to eat carbs? Okay, you're going to have 200 something grams of carbs every fucking day. And it just, dude, I felt like shit. I didn't look good. I didn't feel good. I wasn't into it. But you're going to have to go, you have to. So I don't do well with certain carbs. My body doesn't, but there's a number of different carbs out there. Yeah. And most people don't realize that one carb is not the same just as much as protein is not the same. And that's going to get us into the whole fake meat shit too. But uh, <laughs> the... Which you're I, a big proponent of <laughs> fake meat. Beyond Meat. Yeah. He's okay. actually sponsored by Beyond Meat. <laughs> uh, it's called weird. elk, yeah. by the way. Um, <laughs> the... You know, low carb, I, I actually don't think it's that bad, but I think keto is kind of a weird situation for people because it, it keto does something to your body where when you try to, if you ever make the transition out of it, it's not good. It your is body tough. struggles. It now, tough, low carb sure. is, I think low carb is okay for certain people. Um, and depending on what your body does and how it treats carbs and everything, but then you're getting into the whole processed food thing. And yes. I mean... I I hear what you're saying. There's so many variables into a diet that it's it's tough. Because it I mean sugar like, fit, like fitness and health and wellness whatever that let's, let's just pretend that's umbrella, a huge yeah. umbrella yeah. where it's like dude it is the most debated <clears throat> most heated most where this works for me but you look just It doesn't and Paul that's and the, I that's like body wise, Paul and I are like same height, same weight for the most part. He's a little lighter than I am, but like something that works for him might not work for me. No. But we look close. But there's one vaccine that works for everyone. I'm just saying. <laughs> Actually, and they're made by like six brands and they all came out at the same time. <laughs> but it works for everyone. So we're fine. <laughs> Great job. Nice. Nice job. I was waiting for that one. That was great job. All right. So we're going to wrap this podcast up. Hey, great job. Okay. The diet thing. I don't like the diet. Okay. 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 The diet thing. I don't like diets. I hate them. I think that people should understand the difference between like a surplus and a calorie deficit. And you shouldn't go crazy on a calorie deficit. Women, women out there that listen to this, like don't eat 1200 calories. That shit's not going to work. Like eat more, eat more. Like I told my ex for years, I'm like, you got to eat more to lose weight. And people think I'm fucking crazy, but it's not. Like, understand what your BMR is, which 
people don't know what that is. Yeah. Basically, if you don't get out of bed, you wake up in the morning and you got to breathe and you got to eat. Like that's how many calories you burn in a day. And me, I'm six foot one to ten to twelve ish in my cal- I burn like nineteen hundred calories without doing anything. God damn. I mean that you burn at least that too, right? Well, I so, so that's the thing. Like that's I your look, BMR. So I look basic- at my parents and both slow ass metabolism. I got their mm-hmm. metabolism, a slow ass metabolism. You still burn that many calories, guaranteed. <sighs> okay. There's it's a math equation. It's fucking science, dude. It's okay. real science. Not Two the things vaccine I'm science. really bad at: math and science. So <laughs> yeah. you're you're talking to the wrong fucking guy right now. Uh, but I did do, and I I still do. A, a very, and I guess to be fair, it probably does equate to more of like a ketogenic diet now, but dude, the protein I have meat eggs like that. Yeah. My first meal of the day is two eggs and probably a cup, cup and a half of ground beef and maybe like a half avocado, maybe. And that's, that's my and the first avocado meal. is really good for you. Oh, people dude, understand. It's like, fucking so good. <clears throat> people don't understand the difference in like, fat like different fats different carbs different proteins different everything and how your body digests them and everybody's how it's made like i know some people that can't eat eggs like it fucks them up that fucking sucks dude i eat so many goddamn (laughs) eggs i get an 18 pack from staters uh and dude (laughs) it's gone by sunday morning (laughs) it's gone so i mean it just everybody's body's different and you have to you have to learn and kind of adjust to all that stuff accordingly and then understand the difference between or how many calories you should have as and how many calories you burn during the day. Most people have no idea. Yeah. And your body goes into this like starvation mode. If you're eating too few of calories and it holds on to things and it doesn't so allow true. you to lose weight. Yeah. I'm not going to get into the depth. We're like, it, dude, we're I'm working be out every day. I'm only having a thousand calories a day. <clears throat> what the fuck? I can't yeah. lose weight. I'm actually gaining weight. Yeah. And that's it's because you're, your body's holding on to yeah. everything it can. Cause, Cause it's, it's like, like, it's an Oh shit mode. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oh fuck. We're in a situation where we don't want to be in. So we're going to hang on to whatever there, we got for as long now as we can. Now there are ways to taper it down. Like if you're doing a competition, you can taper your, your calories and everything down to slim out to that whole 2% body fat. Yeah. But you have to do it in these steps. And those people that go through that now, I've never done a comp, but, those people that do those comps, I mean, you're talking six months of cutting your calories back like a hundred yeah. calories a dude, week. That is until all of a sudden you're getting Bro, dude, no, what's discipline? So the discipline, I yeah, it's discipline to get there, but the discipline would be after. Because you can't go from all of a sudden dropping all these calories to having your comp and then the next day you just like Conk. oh three thousand calories because yeah. it feels yeah. good. Your body will your shock. body's gonna Ruined. fucking go you, haywire. Like you basically become you have this eating disorder at that point because you can't you can't readjust and go back to a normal calorie content. You have to go back in those steps. You can't eat properly, and your body just is it you, wrecks people. You see where they're like, "Oh, I finished my comp," and they're like stuffing donuts and pizza down their throat, and you're like, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea." And you're gonna feel like shit tomorrow. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> literally feel like. And then you're tomorrow you die. have to still eat a thousand calories, yeah. and that's it. Because yeah. if you go any more than that, then your body's just gonna be wrecked. And I they think a anything. lot of people in, within that physique world they don't they don't think about that that Sometimes, second yeah. part where it's like, <clears throat> oh, after I'm done, my my comp's done. I can do whatever I want, right? It does, it does so, like, I know people that have gone through that comp thing, and then, then they, their hormones are so messed up afterwards. They can't it's digest bad, no. food. Then they have to go to the doctor, and they have to get, like, all sort of, like, tests and estrogen shots and everything. And, like, men have to get all that stuff, too. And it's because it just wrecks them. And, I mean, more power to them. If they can go through it, they can stay disciplined all the way down and all the way back up, like, good for them. That's tough, yeah. I couldn't do it. No, I absolutely. Okay. So <laughs> clearly, okay. as we get into this, uh, fitness is a huge part of your life. Right. Uh, so we should, should we step back to the pack dump real quick? Uh, we're going to have to start rolling oh, out here pretty soon. Pretty quick. What do okay. we got? Yeah. 143. Oh, God damn, yeah, dude. So. Talk a lot. Uh, all right. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go straight okay. to Some questions our, here. uh, man, we got, we're skipping everything, <laughs> but this has been a great conversation, Yeah. but one of the things that people really look forward to is our would you rather. And so I put them up on the gram. 
hundreds and hundreds of people are like so into this. Uh, and I'm actually really excited about this. So, <laughs> uh, I put up 10 questions and for this one. Yep. Okay. 10 questions. It's all, would you rather it's an A or B this or that? Yes or no kind of a deal. Uh, and so I'll go through them. We'll, all three of us will roll through it, Let's do it. and we'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let the comedy Jeff's like come through. He's cringing. A little, okay, a little so, nervous. <laughs> so I, I'm actually really excited you didn't see any of these. So, all right. Would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma for a decade? Coma. Coma, for sure. I would say jail. I would say jail. You can wake up from coma and be like, what I miss? This is a good call. Uh, what however, however, 68% say, said jail. Really? Yep. Sixty eight percent. I know. I posted a I posted a story the one day that was like, Would you rather go ahead ten years or what was it, ten years and you get ten million dollars, fifty million dollars, yeah. or go back to when you were ten years old and start over with wow. all your knowledge. Fuck. Dude, with all the current one. knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like That's a tough one. What'd you get? What'd you get? Most people said they'd go back yeah. to when they were ten. I'm like Okay, I want a ranch. I don't want to be around people now. So uh, give me can that we, 50. Can we crack the last yeah. one while we do this? But, yeah, that one was a tough one because I had to think about it for a little while. I'm like, hmm. I mean, you could bet on sports. You could do everything. Oh, and, and, and that's such a good call, though, because knowing what, thank you, knowing what you know now, it's like, dude, you could – you could really take advantage of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> think, think about the Patriots Falcons Super Bowl. God, you could make some yeah. money. <laughs> That's something we didn't talk about uh, is like the draft. Like, Next podcast. Crazy I shit. didn't see much uh, of it. All right. So would you rather have everyone you know be able to read your thoughts or for everyone you know have access to your internet history? <laughs> Which I feel like is almost the same thing. Yeah. But... What do you guys got? I do internet history. Do my thoughts, because then you're gonna know my history. Fuck it. I mean, uh, one will lead to the other. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say internet history too, because I probably think of way more fucking <laughs> things in my head than I actually oh, decide to Google. Guaranteed. So 88 percent said internet. Wow. They'd rather give you their internet history than actually your thoughts, which I think says a whole lot about, <laughs> about humanity. <society. laughs> yeah. We absolutely. Are very much uh, the same. Agave watermelon. watermelon. Agave watermelon. Agave. The last one. Ranch water. Good stuff. All all been good. Four point five. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, these have been actually very, yeah. very good. Uh, my least favorite. Too fruity. Too 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 bland. I'm okay with it. Too bland. No, I'm okay I with actually it. don't mind that one. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent okay with that. Shout out to the two white guys. <laughs> <laughs> White privilege. White pl- I don't know. Watermelon. <laughs> Come on. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well done. Well done. I like that one. All right. Would you rather give up air conditioning <laughs> and heating for the rest of your life or give up internet for the rest of your life? Where am I living? <laughs> <laughs> Not part of the equation. Oh, come on. No. Nope. It's got to be. If you're nope. in Florida, I'm nope. going to give up internet. But. I'm you live in Idaho right now, so that's where your current situation is at. Actually, I don't give a shit about the internet. You can cut that out. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, air and heating. <laughs> air and heating? I yeah, would do air good. and heating as well. Yeah. 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 Sleep with the window. So open. I grew up in a house where it was floor heaters, and if it was fucking <laughs> hot out, you open a goddamn window. Uh, I'm Mexican, son. We don't turn that shit on regardless. Exactly. Blankets, exactly. Or open There's a window. There's people who have that shit, and they don't use it. So, yeah. Air well, and, I've seen it. Air and heat. It's got to go. Uh, internet was 73%. percent yeah, I'm like, man. I know. I know. Uh, I know. Yeah, see, I'm the guy that sleeps when it's like, if it's above 65 in my house, I can't sleep. <laughs> too hot? Or too yeah. too hot. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like, I sleep like a damn furnace, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he rents out meat lockers to go to sleep. Yeah, you need to date that girl from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> fucking. <laughs> okay, would you rather always have B.O. and not know it, or... Always smell B.O. on everyone else. It's a tough one. I don't know. With COVID going around, can anybody even smell anymore? Oh, true that. <laughs> true. <laughs> Have you had COVID yet? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, I, I feel like I probably did at one point. Yeah, the I times I, talk, I got tested, I was like, for sure I have it. Negative. Yeah. 
But I, well, I you can you can get a test and it'll ne- it'll say negative, and then you go get another test and it'll say positive. Oh, no, you don't know what you're talking about. No, there's people. <laughs> I'm just fucking. Uh, get to you. <laughs> fuck you. you got me all excited. Uh, okay, so you got <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn you motherfucker. No, uh, so what, okay. I have well, heard those stories where they're like they've taken them back to back, and one yeah. says yes, one says no. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was one guy that was part of the company, Elon Musk company or yeah, Elon Musk did it, but yeah. there was one guy that was part of the company that I was working with that he, he got a phone call. He was in line to get a COVID test, and then he had to run out for some reason. And then he got a call later that afternoon that said he was positive. And he's like, "Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't even take it." So yeah, what the fuck's going on. Oh, but, uh, yeah. shout out to our homegirl Pam. She just got her first COVID test, and they didn't ask for an ID or anything. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. They got to pitch that whole no ID thing. Yep. Like that's there you go, because that's racist oppression. as fuck, bro. <laughs> oppression. I got to take three of them, three of those COVID fucking tests here soon when I go from Canada. Fuck it's going to be good. Uh, <clears throat> I, can't I, wait, would, I can't wait for the COVID test to be like when you get an STD test. <laughs> you got to go through the urethra. No. Oh, that's going to be great. Clean it all out. It's going to be so much fun. How big's that? That, that, uh, <laughs> they got to use the extra, the extra swab. large yeah. swab. The old penicillin. Uh, 52% said uh, they'd rather uh, always smell. So they'd always yeah, rather. That's what I would probably. <sighs> yeah, I hate smell. I don't want to smell everybody. Yeah. All right. Would you rather lose the ability to read? This is a weird one for me. I, I felt like this was very close. <laughs> would you rather lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? I don't read anyway. <laughs> what I said. <laughs> but, picture books. Let's do it. Speak. I'm good. I don't need to talk to anyone. What? Yeah. You pick speak? Yeah, you I would say I read 100%. You know, you know, I, guess I don't even read as it is, dude. I dude would, we're talking I'm to the guy that goes from the back country and doesn't like see yeah. people forever yeah. Yeah. at True. the same time. Uh, so 65% said read. Uh. They'd rather <clears> lose... They would, yeah, okay. they would rather lose the ability. Everyone's shallow, narrow-minded non-readers. <laughs> How dare you? That follows you. When I got to college, I couldn't read. They, I had to go back. <laughs> all those drugs are smoked. <laughs> yeah, all those so fucking I was, frat boy I was drugs, this, bro. I was this crazy guy that I got to college. I had to take those. You have to take those like placement exams. <laughs> I don't know if you guys went to college or not. But um, you have to take those like reading comprehension exams to see where they place and everything. And I, <clears throat> I tested out of calculus, having never taken a math. <laughs> like, I hadn't taken a math class in years and i actually even took the calculus exam because i didn't want to take calculus and they're like no you need to and i'm like bullshit so they gave me the calculus exam just to see like as soon as i showed up i didn't i didn't know what a calculus problem was i got like an 86 percent you're fucking but i couldn't read rain man <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i didn't rain know man. i was like <laughs> we're doing we're going to vegas after this yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I couldn't figure out how to read and like write and all that sort of my reading comprehension was garbage. Now it looks weird because if you read my posts, like I'm very articulate. I can talk and everything, but yeah, you're smarty no pants. Chance. I get it. I had to take dude. School was very hard for me as well, but like there's certain <laughs> things that I just fucking, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at. Yeah. Which a lot of people aren't. So mm-hmm. shout That's out right. to me. Well said. <laughs> all right. Uh, would you rather have one real get out of jail free card or a key that opens any door. I oh. don't agree with the majority of this one, but I want to hear what you say. I'd say get out of jail. There's some people that need to go down. Give me the key. <laughs> key? Yeah. Dude, I give me a dude, if you get a, a one get out of jail free oh, card, yes. you could do some fucked that's up like the shit. purge all over. Like the again. purge, exactly. <laughs> that's what my that's where my head went. But seventy six percent said, "Give me the key." Yeah, okay. that see that doesn't make sense to the whole people like and not wanting to know their thoughts thing. Yeah, that that's seems true. like that's the close. opposite of each other. Yeah, that I part. agree. But yeah, I, I want to. And again, like I said before, I I listed that <laughs> off. I'm like that. Just, just, the <laughs> the percentage just, just does not make sense. No. All right, would you rather be able to talk to animals that fly, or animals that live under the water? This is a very close one. Very close. Underwater. Yeah, I gotta go underwater. I'm scared of the ocean. I don't want. I don't know what. I would go either one, because dude, be able to talk to either one of those animals that could just tell you like shit that you would that nobody knows would be super cool. You know, that's so hard, man. Right? You think about it. Because if you could fly, you can go anywhere, dude. You could fly. 
safety. When so underwater, anywhere, you're restricted to whatever's down oh, there. Ex- true, Very true, true. But the percentage of the actual ocean that we we actually know about. <laughs> oh, we don't want to know. Exactly. Oh, it's nuts. Dude, we've, we know like 10%. Let's, let's go venture into space instead of the ocean. It's <laughs> a good call, too. Yeah. But Another podcast. Uh, Nobody wants to know fif- what's under in the ocean. 56% said water. Again, pretty close. It is pretty close. Pretty close. But that could yeah. that could go either way. But honestly, like I said, either way, I would love to just pick the brain of either one of those yeah. animals. And be like, dude, tell me what you know. Yeah, <laughs> please. All right, this one's pretty lopsided. Uh, would you rather have all traffic lights you approach to be green, or never have to stand in line again? So when you're driving, just you're cruising through greens. Or you roll up to anywhere where there would be a line and you just go straight to the front. I could deal with the lines. You I could, could you I could deal, deal with, with lines, lines because I can like talk to people and talk shit and like have some fun in okay. a line and okay. enjoy I, I myself. That. I can enjoy myself there and, and have a conversation, but in traffic, yeah, fuck. No. I mean shit, it took me yeah. I, I drove, you sent me a snapshot that? of your traffic situation. <laughs> yeah, it, was like, it was like four miles, yeah. and it took me Shout 20 out to minutes. you. You were fucking 15 minutes late, so no big deal. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, I'm not going to stand in line. I, I don't mind a good traffic jam. So, cowboy. Uh, I'm going to go <laughs> yeah, straight up lines because uh, your boy used to do a two-hour commute to work, and that shit takes l- years off your life. So I lived in Chicago, man. You couldn't get anywhere in oh, Chicago. Yeah. And it was like... Yeah, You're know. doing all metro shit, like it's all train <laughs> shit, and trains are sketchy as fuck in Chicago. <laughs> Shout out to Chicago. Seventy uh, percent <laughs> chose uh, lines. They'd rather be, they rather be able to skip, skip the a line. line. Yeah, really? Seventy yeah. <laughs> percent. I mean, follow. I don't like people, but I can still, <laughs> <laughs> I can still deal with the line. I Would think. you rather be able to see <clears throat> ten minutes into your own future, or? 10 minutes into the future of anyone else but yourself. Like, where are you talking? Ten, like, any 10 minutes? Any like 10 you can minutes. just pick, like, in yeah. five years from <laughs> like now? Right, like, right now, you'd be like, what, what does your future look like? Yeah. Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Blacked out. <laughs> Man, I got some. That's but tough. It really comes down to, like, would you rather know your own future or somebody else's? That's what it really comes to. It depends on the, per- like, is Trump going to be president again in, like, five years? No, it's not going to happen. Oh, five, or Four five years? years, maybe, yeah. yeah. Or soon. That's tough. Am I going to be, like, in a concentration camp in a couple years? Yeah, that'd be it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, I'll be there. But, it's, again, we're not looking standing at a couple in line. years. We're looking at ten minutes. Right. But if I know in ten minutes, like, in a couple of years, then I could just take off into the back. Well, I'd still, yeah, they're going to catch me back there anyways, but fuck. Um, probably not. I'd rather know my, my own future. Your own. Uh, I don't care. I mean, I'll, I don't care. Yeah. That's, I, I'd say no to either, but if I had to choose. I, am I, I going to have a family, kids, <laughs> that sort of thing? Yeah. I'd like to know be like lonely, yeah. sleeping on a corner. Maybe someone else's. Just jerking off in a sock. <laughs> uh, so 55% wow, all right. said they wanted to know their you own. You picked future. the wrong 10 minutes. You're like, fuck. <laughs> like, man, I did not want to know that 10 minutes. <laughs> I fuck. was not horny 10 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, okay, 55% said they wanted to know their own for a few okay. years. Shallow. Shallow. Shallow <laughs> assholes. Last one. Would you rather swim, and this is super fucked up. Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> Would you rather swim 300 meters through shit or dead bodies? And yes, the dead bodies are not that fresh before you even ask that. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, dead bodies. Oh, God. Wow. Oh, shit. I didn't get the percentage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm swimming through shit. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, You're yeah. going to go for the shit. Yeah. I mean, so I went to Houston after Harvey. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, good I'm going to choose the dead bodies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I went to the World Series. Shout out to the Astros for winning oh, against the Dodgers. Don't stop. Game five. That's I was false information. <laughs> yeah. Cheating Spencer. as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, podcast over. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, 52% said 
dead bodies. Oh my goodness. I you know. Guys are gruesome. I know. You're gruesome. I know. And I will say that one I got the most DMs about. <laughs> People were like, really? wait a second. So like bottom line, this is terrible. Like, why would you ever pick this question? Uh two, like how fresh are the dead bodies? Uh like what are we like talking about? Like three hundred meters seems kind of far, but <laughs> Dude, isn't it the weirdest shit that I get most engagement on? It's so weird. But I love these, dude. And people love these. Like, I got hundreds of fucking responses on this. So it's awesome. That's nice. I'm, I'm all about it. Cool. Uh, sounds you. like we're out of time. Jeff, yeah. dude, we could have done this for literally oh, yeah. seven hours. You're the man. <laughs> we'll have to come out and do this again. Dude, again, you said you're going to be here in like a month and a half, two months. So we're well, going to make this yeah, happen hopefully again. Hopefully sooner than that. I'll bring some milk steak for this one. So fucking, one. We'll please, like carry it. your own goddamn weight around here. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. <sighs> all right. Fair enough. Uh, Jeff, where can people find you, and what are you getting into next? What am I getting? Ooh, Maybe tough. you don't want to tell people what you're getting into next. <sighs> so uh, you can find me on Instagram would be Relentless Hunter. We already talked yep. about that without the uh, vowels, so you and the E are gone at the end. Find him on um, OnlyFans <clears throat> as well. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. I do not. So I'm old, man. Fucking so the social I, media bro. thing. No. Not going to happen. I got Instagram. I barely look at Facebook. I don't know what the fuck TikTok is. And everybody's talking about these other. Nope. Not going to happen. Um, I love it. So you got Instagram and that's it. And I would rather that be gone. But you guys can follow me. I love you. Um, <clears throat> actually like helping people. So that's all right. That's yeah. kind of why I started the whole fitness thing. I, because I, respect I like that. to see people like succeed. Yeah. And everything. So that's kind of the. Uh, the website so built athletics is the website and the uh built with a t yep built and then the um the supplement equipment nutrition that sort of company that i'm down here right now is bootleg gear so we're doing more the prohibition style um whiskey like everything so we have a pre-workout called moonshine oh, yeah. yeah so we're gonna use all those flavors and then Love we're it. Gonna, you're gonna have a, <clears throat> a like a hydration mixer that you can like top off in your booze and it's going to work out great. <laughs> Shit, yeah. No hangovers. No, no hangovers. We're just going to mix them all together. It's going to work out. great. When is that shit going to be live? <sighs> you know what? I'll find out a little bit more tomorrow, but okay. we're talking, I want to say it's like 2022. No, 12 to 14 weeks. Okay, cool. So oh, towards weeks. the Good end. Shit. Of, yeah. So we might be able to drink it next. All right. Time well, let us know and we'll fucking pump that shit. Yeah. So, and then, um, I guess that would be next. And I am trying to buy a company in the industry that's a little more event based. Enron, <laughs> Tesla, Tesla. Te- Enron. Aren't, aren't they gone? <laughs> Pfizer. I'm trying to buy Pfizer. <laughs> Pfizer. Moderna. <laughs> you hey, I heard you shit. get probably hey, shares for Johnson and Johnson are great right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, they got to come out with a third vaccine. Yeah. yeah, for the rest of your life, it's gonna be great, guys. <clears throat> yeah, seems to make sense. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, for all the different like variations of it, right? yeah, yeah. Um, everything's fine. Yeah. So I have. Oh, I'm trying to buy the event company. So next year, because because COVID like ruined everything from an event standpoint, like Spartan sure. races and yeah, everything, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. gone. Uh, archery shoots, oh, they were fuck, gone. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So and a lot of those companies, they like disappeared, and so I'm trying to purchase one and and get involved. I have a warehouse gym that we're building out in the Boise area that yeah. we actually might. Um, like franchise out it's more towards the hunting and the outdoor based Dope. so it's going to be a lot of stair climbers <laughs> yeah stair climbers the uh the, the jonah's ladder or something you like that swim oh, through God. shit it's great what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> dead bodies for <laughs> dead bodies you got sleds and everything else a lot of like throwing tires around all those sort of fun it, things dude. right dude tires are I mean, fucking awesome dude that i mean it's a i mean shit if we want to get into it we can throw an axe and some like Cut down some trees out there. Let's just yeah, build some lumberjacks some for days. While you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's kidding. laughs> but um, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of which, I got to go down to a sweatshop. There you go. Week. Oh, yeah. Speaking of shout California out sweatshops, yeah. shout, shout out, out, out to all the sweatshops out here. <laughs> yeah, most people don't realize those exist. Uh, yeah. That's where the whole like made in America thing comes yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. come you on, just bust them over. Yeah. No, people don't even understand that. <laughs> they don't. We're the home of it. Logistics. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, fucking, can you take us, uh, take us fucking home, guys, please, Paul? Please follow the main man at Spencer Crick's official. Uh, follow myself at the Alpha Instinct. 
uh, follow the, 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 the podcast. Show some love. Uh, if you're listening to this, subscribe to the podcast. Share it with a friend. Share it with your dog. Share it with uh, – uh, listen, oh, listen to it on your next hunt there. Uh, Jeff, thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. I had a blast. Yeah, for sure. All right, big hustles, y'all. We'll see you next time. <laughs>